Hello and welcome to Dialogue Choices Podcast. We missed a week last week because Andrew and I didn't sleep. So we were like, I give up. <laughs> and so we didn't do one. But this this week yeah. we did sleep. What a surprise. <laughs> wow. That's where we are well, today. You, it's, it's important to note that you were both. I, I was awake during the time we were supposed to record last week and you both weren't sleeping while we were not recording you're just working on other things bad use of time uh did, still... didn't you go back to sleep andrew i did go back to sleep yeah that uh -huh. was like the, that was like your goal was to go back to sleep uh in that time so you could be uh, ready for the final fantasy stream in my case oh, i had already had to... i had already had coffee because i was going to try to power through the podcast but i was definitely depending on at least having Andrew there too. So him him being a wreck Sorry. too. I'm like, oh fuck. Yeah, this isn't gonna work. And also I already have I coffee, can't... so I also can't go back to sleep. Yeah. I can't no, imagine I... going to sleep and then waking up and then being okay. I can't like I can't do that. Once I, mm -hmm. I like for the first four hours of the day I can't say things very well. Yeah, my my body just quits on me where it'll it'll just be like, Oh yeah, you uh you went you uh you woke up? It's not you're not you're not ready to wake up yet. It's been too it's been too short. You're not going to be good today. Too bad. <laughs> you're awake. You're never going back, boy. <laughs> oh, like no. I yeah. Like I if I if I know that I'm already fucked, like it just it, there's nothing I can like I I can sit there and try and lay in bed and like put on like some white noise and do whatever the fuck I can try to do and I'll just be trying to go back to bed and I can straight up just waste two hours trying to go back to bed and have it never work so at some point you, you, you just give up i'm like okay today's just gonna suck yeah just all the more reason to have uh weekends programmed into my schedule now where i only have to do like five episodes per series per week instead of seven because like it just if i if, if once a week my sleeping fails then it's just like well fuck it today's just a loop. sleeping day yeah, well, not even because I won't sleep. It won't work. Oh, right. So instead, it's just a oh, you can. Just, I see what just you mean. Don't you, work day. <laughs> you can use the day up. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just fuck off and play WoW or watch The Expanse or whatever. And I'll be like, this is just a nothing. This is just a whatever. Can't do much else because it's still quarantine. There's no world outside. Uh, yeah. Unless I just want to go go to a bike path alone or something. There's no world outside. I mean, it's not going great. <laughs> I, yeah. I always want to say, it's funny. I got in such the, I got in such a habit this year, this last year, of referring to you know the state of the world right now as 2020. Like here it is, this is 2020, and it's always like the vague reference to like all the all like several <laughs> elements of political strife, but also just the overbearing, world changing aspect of the coronavirus and so on. Like, but like now it's not 2020. <laughs> No, it's 2021 it's 2020. and i yeah. still continue to always want to refer to it as 2020 <laughs> like because well, because the feeling and the state of the world is just so specifically 2020 like that is the problem that is the word the, the term for all this but it's not true anymore <laughs> and i hate I, that <laughs> i was watching a video from july 2020 and i somebody mentioned the before times and I was like, it was so jarring to me because I haven't heard that expression in a while. People don't even talk about the before times anymore. At least I haven't heard it. It's like, yeah, like we've been in this for so long that that wistfully referring to like three months ago before it started is such an old idea that it doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> yeah. Because that itself is referring to like, like that now yeah. that amount of time ago is several of that time ago ago. <laughs> like it, it just loops and loops. It's like when you measure your, t your time, like your life in terms of like how long high school was. And then you're like, and you're like eventually you're like, oh, fuck, high school ended three high schools ago. <laughs> like it's such a it's such a large amount of time that you can't like process it the same way anymore. We can be as nostalgic about the early pandemic now. I am like, not like, nostalgic about it. Nostalgic. I'm definitely not. <laughs> like not think, like, nostalgic might not be the exact word, but like, you know, what I mean? like, like, you, can, you can like... Yeah think back on that like a distant past thing like i remember i remember uh, ago, <laughs> a distant past back in my day like people... it was like I, I remember like oh man that, what a bummer this 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 thing might actually last long enough that i have to turn 30 in the pandemic and that was in april of 2020 
And you, because, your birthday is in August, right? No, that no, that no, my birthday is in April. That's what I mean. Yeah. Oh, like, like it's like, oh, oh man, this is. I don't think lockdown is going to be gone in time. Like, because 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 we still didn't fully understand. We didn't know, yeah. How yeah. astronomically large and long this was going to be. So we're like, oh man, ah uh, fuck, it, it might actually last like a whole three months. <laughs> What a hmm. what a it's... long time to be like this, and like now it's like we don't even remember what the world was like anymore. We're gonna we're gonna have uh, like difficulties like reintegrating into society. Like our generation is gonna be defined by this handful of years, yeah. Because we're absolutely. gonna be we're gonna fundamentally behave differently, potentially for the rest of our lives, in a way that we don't fully understand, but other generations will notice about us. And it's like that's that's the fucking world we're in. <laughs> that's the fucking state of things. Like, what a fucking it's, concept! I love the idea the, that it's like you're gonna look back in this time. It's like, wow, everyone yeah. dunked on fucking millennials, and then a pandemic happened, and all these millennials really just didn't take it well. And it's like, what happened to this generation? <laughs> well, like it'll be all these things. Like, why don't they like crowds? <laughs> Yeah. What they, yeah. They, didn't own, they didn't own homes they didn't hang out with crowds they did like they all went to school but didn't get good jobs what the hell happened to this they, ne generation? they never, touched, really they never touched their face but they always washed their hands <laughs> <laughs> all these I, different yeah. fucking elements it's definitely it's a, a case of weird it's definitely a case yeah. of like I, I i think like here in portugal we're probably going to be in lockdown for the rest of the year really even with vaccination uh, there's always going to be measures there's always going to be slowdowns and it, even even on a, even if the thing is because it's going to be so progressive coming coming back to normal or what making a new normal as it as it were it's uh it's like a real question of well now i don't want to you know what i mean it's like i don't feel it's, i feel I, I miss being with friends you know meet space friends and i miss playing meet space <laughs> <laughs> yeah because you know i'm a youtuber it's it's different uh <laughs> but i'm i miss i miss uh you know playing playing a band together and just going to to shops and doing whatever without having to worry about am i now gonna contract this deadly disease that might kill me or my or my family um but it's also like that all this time without doing it 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 shapes the like we, we we can't be pine. I'm talking from a personal perspective, but I, I assume it's the same for everybody. I can't. I didn't get through 2020, and and I'm not gonna get through 2021 with uh, while pining for the good old days of just doing whatever. I'm, I'm not here being like, ah, oh, man, I really, I really want to go back. No, I need. I, I I came to terms with this, and I need to be okay with it for a while or however it's gonna last. And then when it's not this anymore, then well, we'll see. But I'm not. You're just never gonna go know, outside think... again. Yeah. You're gonna be the. Sure to... What's the Japanese word? Ikikomori. Yeah. Yeah, hikimori. Yeah. Fully it's... give up on ever living in society again. <laughs> uh, I mean that's like, like I. So for example, I went. I did go out recently, um, and it was like really. I felt like immediately anxious the moment I I realized that there were a lot of people in a vicinity, and I was like, "Are, are <laughs> am I crazy? Am, am I the only?" You know, there's like this moment of like you feel like you got gaslit, where you're like, "Fuck, did I? Was I the only one who got told about a pandemic?" Because all of y'all don't seem like you noticed. That, you know, that sort of and when I see that, there's that a sampling bias. Not one to yeah, yeah. that's also the truth. Yeah, for sure. anyone who doesn't give a fuck about the pandemic is going to be around outside the most, in general. But yeah, that, though I went to the I went to the post office to check my PO box at one point, and there was just people walking in there around in there with no masks on. I'm like, what? Like, yeah. what the fuck? And it's like I I just it's it's just frustrating. I'm and like different people live through this in different ways like i like i have there's multiple people in my house that just have to deal with like customer service face to face every day <laughs> and it's like that's a very different pandemic experience whereas like i have been like shut off from society because i can because my work doesn't involve being forced to be with people all the time so like i like i yeah i, I straight up like i i, I put I, I i continue to especially because i can order food and stuff like that I will put off going to like grocery shopping 
longer and longer sometimes and it's and like more and more it's like longer and longer gaps between seeing anyone besides my housemates in person and it's always like this weird threatening experience whenever you actually go out anywhere and you're surrounded by people and you, and you just like you get paranoid like because you like use the you, like you you're like oh fuck i didn't use the hand sanitizer at the register and like uh did, did I, what have i touched or like did i accidentally touch my face or something like that and like is this the one like like every time i <laughs> Every time I have to go out to deal with something and I'm touching surfaces and things, it's always like it, it's definitely less bad than it was at the beginning when I was more afraid of it, which was ironically when it was less dangerous because it was such a such a smaller pandemic back then because we had no idea how big it was going to get. And I'm a little desensitized yeah. to it now, but there's still the aspect of like in the back of my head, I'll, I'll, I'll occasionally think about like how many days has it been since the last time I went to the grocery store? Would I would I be symptomatic by now? Like and like, I guess I made I guess I'm OK this time. Like I have like a timer in the back of my head here and there. I was like, oh yeah, I went to I went to Rayleigh's on like Saturday, and it's like Thursday, so I guess I'm fine. Uh, but like there was a mm. early on, it would be like I would fucking like snore or something, and my throat would be sore, and then I'd be like, this is it, I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, just every any time. other. You would catastrophize any symptom, and I would create <laughs> my own symptoms by just being somebody that wakes up shittily on a regular basis. And be like, no, but this seems worse than normal. Every time <laughs> I, I smell like a particularly strong s smell and I remember that I have the sense of smell, I'm like, oh, no, I'm still good. Like, and every time I cough, I'm like, mm. <laughs> it's, it's just I think that's probably a common experience for a lot of people. Maybe not the most unpreoccupied of, of people, but I think like seeing people who are just don't give a damn about the pandemic, that just makes me want to just, no, I will, uh, my house is very nice. I will put myself in there. Oh, yeah, it's, like, it's so not, deeply frustrating. I'm not anti, <laughs> like I'm aware that it exists and I am not, oh, no, 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 you know, uh, I'm not, I'm not, no, no, uh, I'm saying, and I, I get that. Like I, I'm not, I, I don't have a fear of it. Like I'm not as scared of getting it. Cause like, good luck killing me. But like the, <laughs> but the no F, one else like has succeeded so far. Yeah, exactly. I was like, many have tried, all have failed, but good luck. The sure, Mr. COVID. Burns syndrome uh, or whatever. Yeah, well, so you have I so mean, many diseases. They're all. It's like they're all trying to fit through this door, and they none of them can get through. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, but I, you know, I don't go around. I don't like. I'm not touching things uh, and then rubbing my face. I'm not. I wear a mask. I do. You know, I do the things. It's just like all I. The way I approach, like the way I approach stuff is because I'm wearing a mask anytime I'm outside. I touch anything I want to because the moment I come inside, I just wash my hands. Yeah, that that's not how it's at that, all. Yeah. Uh, and it's, you know, like that's the, like, I don't, I, I'm not somebody who touches my face. Well, besides when I used to smoke, there was no other time I touched my face. I don't go around like putting my fingers in my nose and like sniffing my body. Um, so I don't, you know, I never like panic about like, oh, did I do the thing? Well, oh, I touched the thing. It's like, oh, that's fine. I'll just go home and wash my hands. Mm -hmm. like, just, you know. Like I, because what I, I had, a, I had like a mortifying like, experience where I was like, "Did I just make somebody fear for their lives?" <laughs> did you sneeze? Because I, uh, I, uh, cause I, I was getting, I was getting groceries and like everything was loaded into the cart, and I just left the register, and I like I used too much of the sanitizer that they have there, <laughs> and I was like trying to rub my hands together to like get it like away like finish it or whatever the fuck and like i was like i, I gotta go there's like this place is crowded i gotta go move and I, so i started i started pushing the cart and my hands are still wet on the cart and i'm like oh fuck <laughs> but i got out <laughs> i get outside and i and i put my uh i put my uh groceries in my trunk and then i'm pushing the the cart to the uh cart station which i always do you fucking lunatics uh, I'm so mad at everyone <laughs> in society because they just yeah. leave scattered carts in the parking lot everywhere and just make life hell for the guy that has to gather them all. Well, also like endangering everyone's cars all the time, and also yeah, just, I was gonna say it's not, even, it's not even just... just literally taking up parking spots. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Uh, but, it's but, but I'm on my way back yeah. to the cart, and this person's like, "Oh yeah, I'll take that." I'm like, oh. and I'm, I just kind of like. <laughs> Because I it's just go gross, along with, no, bro. I always default to just going along with whatever the fuck people say on a regular basis. You have it's signed just your out of like a really like a, a social politeness <laughs> or whatever the fuck. So I was like, oh, oh yeah, okay. And I, I, I just kind of let let him take it. But I'm like, one, it's like, why are you just freshly taking a cart straight from another person during a pandemic? Like, what a choice to make. 
Uh, oh. It's like holding doors open for people. It's like, no, it's this, 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 this dies this year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but also, uh, I'm like, oh, God, I think the handle was still wet. <laughs> Yeah, it was like that's, wet that's with impressive. sanitizer, and he's like, walk, and he walked away with like a wet handle, and I'm like, I, I'm just gonna leave. I'm just gonna leave. I'm just gonna get out of here and not not think that about does. this anymore. But I'm still thinking about it. It's been like eight months. You also said to... some very interesting sentences. You were trying to rub your hands together to make it go away, and then the person walked away with a head wet handle, and this situation yeah. can be misinterpreted. That's that. That's my job. I just do that. <laughs> I, I do it on. I definitely do it on purpose. <laughs> you did not do it on purpose this time. No, I do. You did. It's, oh my it's god! Like, it's like Effie will fucking like quote my phrasing. Like it's like, wow, I can't believe you said that. I'm like, I, I, my job is me self-selecting the way I phrase things to make it the most entertaining. That's all I do all day. <laughs> mm, good, good job. Good job. I will say, I, I will say stuff specifically the dumber way, like when I'm playing fucking. <laughs> Uh, spoiler. Um, fuck it. Pre advise. Pre- guess what? Playing Mario. Uh, like when I'm playing Mario oh. and, and I'm like, present yourself to me, Plessy. <laughs> because fucking Plessy oh always like points their ass at you so you can jump on. And they're just like, <laughs> this, this fucking, this needy little bitch is just all over the entire level, spawning in every pool of water every time you approach it and just like presenting their ass to you for you to jump on. Like that's, they do the, it's just, they just do that the whole game all the time so it's like present <laughs> yourself to me <laughs> that is that's just yes. that's just that's just what you do mm-hmm. <laughs> spoilers <laughs> well it's because the game i'm I'm a bit know, ahead of I schedule know. i uh i finished mdk before it came out and then i i was halfway through mario before mdk came out and i just finished the rest of mario uh wow. yesterday good job it's it's short it's not MDK oh, yeah. short. MDK, MDK is, only is th- such a trip. MDK My is God. only like three hours long. And Mario, which all the websites claimed was three hours long, was definitely like six hours long. Uh, and I would, I wasn't really wasting time because it's not really a game where I can waste much time like expounding upon the lore and, and standing around and monologuing or anything. And so I'm just convinced that everyone who says that the game's three hours long is bad mario players like they, skipping like, all the dialogue or no there's not much dialogue either they're just people they're like oh yo yeah, I beat, they're like oh yeah i beat mario you know i got like two stars per mario 64 level and then i beat the game and it's like um, what are you doing who does that you get every star or mario. at least like 80 yeah. percent, and you skip the handful that look boring or whatever i thought they have a thing <laughs> for that like a completion yeah like this it's, like it's, that game has 100 stars and like I noticed that like the first bell that you get that you encounter because the it's the, there's like the gates in the game uh, for progress requires five, but the first region has like twenty, <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> what did what did you just fucking like qualify for the They're bell and skipping, then just yeah. beat the game as fast as possible? It's Mario. Don't you want the shines? Why are you here? <laughs> Is, you're not here for the plot, are you? That reminds me. I of, better roll of credits something... as fast as possible, then report online to everyone that the game's three hours long. Fucking idiots. That reminds me of something really weird that happened to me with specifically Tides of Nomenera, uh, Torment, Tides of Nomenera. It's an RPG by by the folks that made uh, Wasteland 3. And uh, it's really good, but it is very verbose. It has a lot of dialogue. And the thing with doing Let's Plays is that, you know, when you read dialogue out loud, it's a lot slower than just reading it for yourself. Yep. And and I was like in episode... 30 of a I, I I'm, I'm checking now to see how many episodes it's 124 long episode so half an hour each uh and back then i was still releasing them like every day because uh, i don't release them every day now but back then i was releasing one episode every day and that was it and uh, by episode 10 or something in, in in episode 50 or sorry after episode 15 somewhere around there there were three different people that asked me that if i still hadn't finished the game and this was like on a let's play that obviously releases once episode once uh, per episode. I still haven't finished the game. It's a freaking long RPG. <laughs> I mean, I get that people can just finish them in 3 days and that's it because it's, you know, the like people are looking finish. at your episode can be like, "God, you're still not done or something." <laughs> and I'm like, like that's what they say over and over be, again. It's going to be the next year until I'm done with this. <laughs> and yeah. it was uh, there are there are always comments. There, there, there's also always the people that are just like, "When are you going to finish this so you can start something else?" Because they just don't care about that playthrough. And so in many cases, they're, they're uh, not watching the videos. They just see like 
it's still around and they keep poking in it's like people will be like because people like poke and be like when do you think this is going to be done and it's like because uh mm-hmm. like it's especially popular on uh, uh, practice both in the comment section and in my discord uh for my patreon series because they want because they want to know when the next one's going to happen yeah, but they're not course. actually watching the series that's happening now for they me it was i think more there. of a i think it was specifically related to how short the game felt for a lot of people and yeah. devoid of content and i've recently learned that i missed like a few hours of content as well because they were like a secret yeah. so an optional yeah so it's like this huge rpg that it left me very satisfied and i was like ah this is great I, I i loved it and then people early on in the let's play being like oh this game doesn't have anything it's, it's such a disappointment it's so mm-hmm. short and i'm like <laughs> i never yeah, underestimate it's... how much people play video games in zombie mode Oh, especially like, a game that's ninety nine percent dialogue. I can't imagine. Yeah, like so many people play games just like half paying attention and multitasking, and like like I was there before. Like in the mid two thousands, I was like watching YouTube videos while playing near Gestalt. So I took no- I like remembered nothing of it when I came back and let's played it later. Uh, when I came, like when I came back and let's played, I was like, wow, this is the plot of this game. And like the same thing goes for <laughs> like. Uh, uh like i cannot i cannot tell you a single gameplay mechanic or any of the story of uh kingdoms of mamalar and i beat it <laughs> there's some games <laughs> i even like platinum trophied that in this way and it's just like oh well actually, i sure did, I, I wasted that experience and here's the biggest kingdoms- sin of all here's the biggest sin on this list is new vegas <laughs> <laughs> oh, New Vegas is so susceptible so, to that. Look though. forward to my eventual blind fucking playthrough of New Vegas. It's gonna be Because even though I've beaten it like three times, I don't know any of it. Like seriously, I know the, I I know the Va- intro. New- I know there's fascists. <laughs> I uh, well, it's kind of complicated. I beat New Vegas once, and I was are they not fascists? On <laughs> they are, but it's it's, it's <laughs> either way. Uh, the they're not. Is, they're not bad fascists. Yes, they are. Yeah. They're they're more Nazis than they're fascists, if that makes a that's difference. That's worse. And then people tell you that's that a circle within Soviets. a circle with no Venn but diagramming, then, but it's the worst circle in the fascism. <laughs> then, then some people will will defend that they're actually they're Soviets, Soviets, and you know do not pay attention to those people. Uh, either way, the oh, point some is, people have really worrying reads of games sometimes yeah, that really give away I, that you shouldn't though. talk to them anymore. <laughs> they do it on purpose. Uh, like how every single pl- is... pl- every single game that criti- uh, criticizes uh, capitalism, with they're like, no, that's actually socialism. <laughs> it's criticizing. It's like, socialism. Oh, okay, you're an idiot. <laughs> I see. <laughs> this game um, that was completely devoid of subtlety, you didn't get it <laughs> because you're so <laughs> politically brainwashed, you can't handle something being incredibly. Just, just, just telling you its themes. <laughs> like New, New Vegas. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, that was it. New Vegas is specifically a tricky game to... Pay. Like, even if you pay attention, what I'm saying is, even if you pay attention, you're still not going to get it completely. There's so much subtext to that particular game that, uh, yeah, I'm sure you're going to... Well, I hope you're going to enjoy it, but uh, you're definitely not going to remember anything. Because I'm, I'm playing it two years after finishing it for the first time, and I, right now I don't remember half of it, so... And yeah, no, I played it when it was <laughs> brand new, so it was during the era of... During the time where the game hadn't actually been redeemed yet, because at first the mm-hmm. reputation was that it was shittier Fallout 3. Mm-hmm. Like it was just uh, this, the common consensus among normies that was just that it was just not a very good game. Like it was just a, sh- a glitchier, less well made version of Fallout 3, and it wasn't very well liked. And then it kind of took a while for like the basically the the public masses like the larger groups that actually bought it to kind of quiet down and then you heard had had this whole you, you got to hear everybody talking about it, how like all the reasons why it was an incredible game and so on uh, that's the definition of a cult classic almost yeah but it just takes yeah it, it, it's it's when things get like re reinterpreted and re-understood essentially like uh kind of like what's happening right now with jennifer's body for example Hmm. Like people keep like people, there's a lot of people rediscovering Jennifer's body and making a big deal about like what's special about it and being like and there's a lot of like I, I say this because like uh, there was a thing where we were like for example Andrew uh, Stephanie and I both found a channel called Yara Zaid that had this really really good video about Jennifer's body and we found it separately at the same time because like the fucking <laughs> algorithm just knew to send it to both of us apparently 
and uh like rowan ellis just put out a video about that exact topic today actually so it's fresh in my mind oh. but it's like but there's like an ongoing like and it's also like specifically uh a queer read of the whole thing that and so like different like different subcultures have a much different read on the whole thing and whereas the actual the actual movie at the time was just this like oh man megan fox is hot and she's from transformers and she can't act but she looks like that and that was like the whole narrative around her so that's how the movie was basically sold even though that's not how it was written or directed or what, like what the uh like the people are like that actually made any of the movie like like it's like it was marketed in a way that was completely counter to everything about the point of the movie or the, even the target demographic of the movie and then it was mm -hmm. and then all the reviews are just like the reviews are actually really gross because the reviews are constantly like, yeah, it's a stupid movie full of dumb bitches and she can't act basically and blah, blah, blah. But, uh, man, you, you can, you kind of get to see her a bit. Like she's still, she sure is hot, but you don't get to see that much of her. So it's not really that good of a movie for seeing how hot, uh, uh, I just fucking played that. Megan I just Fox. lost her name. Megan how did Fox. I do that? Megan Fox. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this, this it's, it's, it's hard to cycle through the list of, <laughs> yeah mistreated actresses <laughs> because like uh not she kristen really stewart not kristen, kristen stewart <laughs> kristen stewart because <laughs> that's yeah. another one where it's like that her reputation took a while to come back from twilight and it's like it wasn't really her fault uh and i've i've been guilty of that too although for me it's just really specific for me, it was just, I was just like, fucking take a drink whenever he does an opening shot in a movie where Kristen Stewart's mouth is open for some reason. Because she's. <laughs> they, they must she, do that on purpose, right? That, that has to be editorial. Like, I don't know. Actors. Kit Harrington has it too, so I don't know. <laughs> That's why I'm saying, like, uh, like watch Harington... Silent Hill Revelations and just, just watch every scene where Kit Harrington has his mouth open by about half an inch and just kind of agape. <laughs> And like, like yeah. he's like looking for stage directions. <laughs> Admittedly, he's not a very good actor. <laughs> he, yeah, that's true as well. He's not even good in but, Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's fortunately for him, his role doesn't actually require him to be particularly. No, he just has overt. to make pouty eyebrows, which is part yeah, of where the a, slightly open mouth hair. pays off. And have hair. He, they really went in all all in on the hair on the later oh, yeah. seasons. It's like, <laughs> my God. <laughs> The thing, the thing that uh, the, the thing I say this because there are certain, like obviously we do, as a, as viewers we have absolutely no idea what kind of direction any, yeah. every person on stage or it's not stage on set that is the correct term uh, gets and actors also get directions for things that maybe they are not interested in. I was reading earlier today, um, is it Patrick Stewart who who plays pra Patrick Stewart? Who plays Patrick Stewart? Wait, that's, his, that's the actor. I'm sorry. Uh, I never watched Star Trek. I don't know the names very well. Patrick Stewart uh, I think plays it was... Patrick Stewart in Patrick Stewart. <laughs> yes. I was I was reading an article Jean -Luc specifically Picard. about... Yes, yes. But he wasn't on Star Trek. It was something else. And apparently the director... <laughs> apparently the director just basically gave him... No, I, it wasn't him. Sorry. It was... Um, Gordon... Oh, I'm, I'm oh, sorry. I don't remember. We're on the wrong actor the whole time? Yeah, <laughs> I'm just mixing up all the names. <laughs> My point is that sometimes actors will have crappy performances that even don't fit the movie just because the editors or the sorry, the um, directors want a certain Give thing. Them strange directions. That's yeah. supposedly a big thing about Twilight. I don't even remember the source because at this point I've like watched a distressing number of videos about the Twilight series on both ends. Like both the uh, like let's just fucking like. Like, uh, what is it, like, uh, Cosmonaut Variety Hour and Why Your Movie Sucks have both done, like, commentary throughs where they, like, they do a commentary track and then they highlight, they do a highlight reel of the commentary track and that's, like, the abridged video of them just laughing at the movie. Then you have, like, uh, Folding Ideas being, like, oh, wait, no, oh, wait, no that was, a uh... Lindsay Folding Ellis ideas. Had, had a video defending Twilight. Folding Ideas had a video where there was like a lukewarm defense of Fifty Shades of Grey. A few videos, actually. Yeah, I, a I, trilogy it, even. But only the first one was, yeah. was, was vaguely positive. And the only real point there was just, wow, the directors tried really hard to make anything out of this trash book. <laughs> yeah, apparently Which the happened, first movie is, is the best and, one. And that's, a, that's a weird parallel. Both of them have that, where they have a talented director making the first Twilight movie and the first... 
uh, Fifty Shades movie. And then the, each sequel got progressively uh, cheaper and shittier. And in both cases, they got rid of the first director and replaced them with much less creative people. And the movies just get worse and worse and worse. And, and like the books are probably also getting worse, but the movies get way worse. <laughs> I, I went to the cinema f to watch the second Shades of Grey, and I came out. I, 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 I'm sort just of proud of one? myself. Why? <laughs> just the second one. Because, yeah. you know, you friends get, are going to know? cinema. I was like, how did she <laughs> get there? Yeah, it's just, you know, the before times. The, <clears throat> the, the, the I'm sort of proud of myself that I came out, and um, I came out of the movie, and I, I specifically pointed out the lack of um, agency of the main actress. And I'm like, she's not the main... She she's not the main actress. She's not the main character, and yeah. and everybody was like focusing on the details because that's what the movie is made for, and it's really directed in that way. It's just the you know the scenes. You know now there's the scene with the beads, and now there's the scene where he has a nice car or something. Now there's the scene where he talks very <laughs> specifically about this helicopter that's weird. This and, helicopter just, that's weird. Yeah, it's so it looks like a ad placement. He's talking about oh, this helicopter has got an end. I, I don't remember exactly the details, but he felt so out of place in that movie. I just and yeah. the thing is, I I don't watch a lot of movies, so it, it must be really blatant for me to have spotted it immediately. But the, the reason the, I you know the, the reason I brought up uh, Twilight was just because a very often made fun of scene in the movie is that the first. The first thing that happens when Bella walks into like the classroom that Edward is in and Edward looks across the class at her and just makes a bizarre face. Like it's just a confusing reaction where he looks like he looks nauseous or revolted or something. It's like, wow, what a romance movie. Uh, like because it's like their first it's their first eye contact. It's like, what is that? What does that look mean? And everyone laughs at it. And that and it's and it's kind of deserved. But uh the, 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 there was a video that was like cross comparing it with the text of the book and it's like oh the uh the, the, it's supposed to be that like he's so attracted to her blood like he's devastatingly wants her blood and he's like repressing himself and look trying to look away and he's like disgusted with himself and he's trying to like escape that and so like poor robert pattinson gets this like baffling <laughs> fucking stage direction of like this impossible to act emotion in a in a book adaptation <laughs> with no narration to try to explain what the fuck and like no one can like it'd be so hard to come up with the, that being in any way comprehensible and it's like oh suddenly you're like this is why their acting is so fucking weird in that movie it's because like in the first movie, there was this constant thing of like, well, how the fuck do you express these bizarre emotions or how, how the fuck do you be these characters that are just awful characters in an awful book? And then as the series goes on, they increasingly resent their own roles, but they're contractually obligated to do the movies. So they're just kind of like, <laughs> so all the more reason yeah. you're like, oh, okay, I see why they're why they're why they just are the worst in these movies. Like it's not <laughs> like and I, and I like I felt on this bandwagon, too. I remember my like fucking some movie reviewing website that i used to have an account on or whatever like i'd have like a list of like actors that i would, where I'm like if this actor's in a movie i'll see every fucking movie they're in and these are actors where i'd never watched them in any movies and like Kristen stewart and robert pattinson were on those lists but like they're both actually good <laughs> yeah Kristen stewart isn't isn't bad i i, I feel yeah uh, i don't know about the <clears throat> robert some something at this point robert the, pattinson, pattinson you you would think he'd yeah. like reinvented his career at this point because it definitely <clears throat> feels like He's been a lot of stuff that showed that he's a good actor, but uh, it's 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 the norm the normy factor of like here's the hyper popular thing you're in, and then the ne next hyper popular thing you in. So like the fact that the last distressingly successful thing he was in was still is still Twilight means that whenever well, like when news comes out about like he's gonna be Batman now, it's like nothing happened in between. Like the whole like yeah, fifteen but, years in between of career didn't exist. It's just like the vampire do... guy's gonna play Batman. <laughs> we need to be honest here. It's very hard to be more successful than Twilight, despite yeah. the hate and the and the backlash, because it's it is an enormously successful franchise for the but movie specifically. It, it just shows everything. how things like that can just stick with you forever, and you and you're just stuck with it. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I I don't know. It, it's all it's all a world I just don't really interact with. Movies because they're not anime. Yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> yeah, they're. they're they always disappoint, so it's easier just to. They don't not. always disappoint. Have you watched the Lord <laughs> he, of the Rings? He really Pretty doesn't like much. live action movies. Yeah. You should I, watch I, the Lord I can't, of the Rings. I cannot suspend my disbelief uh, <laughs> as well with, uh, it's with fascinating. movies because it, 
It has real people in it. Do fucking real people things. Stop doing <laughs> fake people things. Like, fuck. Can't, I, I, I've like, watched him because I remember when he, we went to see the second Hobbit movie in theaters. And no, oh, the <laughs> and like uh, I was we, and then we were watching. There was something on this. TV when he came to the house beforehand. Like my parents were watching something. And every time the camera cut, Andrew visibly flailed his arms in a reaction to the to the cut. <laughs> like the concept of editing was, in was live action it, no, was, it was ruining jarring. his brain. Sometimes like, it's a jarring fucking cut. It was like, just every every, time, it was like a, every, like, every like, scene flat, transition, flat, flat, flat. he would just Jesus. flail. Like, what the fuck? And I was like, that was weird. Anyway, let's go watch The Hobbit. And uh <laughs> we that we we got there like too late and the scenes the seats were too full. So uh, I, I ended up being like I sat with my family, and then Eric, uh, and then uh, Andrew sat in the front of the theater, like next to like the uh, like the handicap space where there's like a big space of no of no chairs. So he was just on his own in the front corner, and I could see him down there <laughs> flailing his arms every time a fucking cut happened. And I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> no, it's specifically is this a thing okay. You do because like you need to you're not even. Like at that point, you're not even performing for anyone because like it's in the dark and only I even know who you are in the whole room, and you don't even know <laughs> and you don't even know that I can see for you. So I'm just imagining you just watch like live action movies at home, and every time a, a scene transition happens or some kind of cut, that's like, oh my god, continuity's lost. This isn't all one take, and you like flail your hands in the air and you're like baffled. <laughs> like, I don't, like, what are you no, doing? There- because, okay, first of all, in The Hobbit, you need to preface, the reason I was flailing was because it was jump cutting during the scene where they were in the barrels going down the water, and it was going from real camera to GoPro, real camera to GoPro. And I was like, ah, oh, fuck, Jesus. The it's GoPros like the were a lot. <laughs> The, jo- this, the GoPros this, drop quality yeah. immediately, and you can tell like there's been a huge. It's really fucking funny that a movie that was like right we're gonna push technology with 48 frames per second, but also here's GoPro shots. Yeah, I was like, what, like yeah. fish, so you're in the middle of watching everything. this. It's it's not that like every cut was. It was like those cuts were so fucking jarring that I'm trying to watch this horrible movie. I'm like, all right, I'm focusing, and then it's like. Huh. and it's like bad quality like oh oh wait <laughs> what like it took my brain a second to go like oh did you go to it did you download this illegally is this a pirated copy did they not finish all the graphical design on this is this like what happened and then it cuts back to normal like wait so it is a good movie and then it cuts back to fucking gopro you're like wait where did it go back again what, ha- what happened here it's, yeah it's like and it does that consecutively for like four times it's like cut 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 and you're like all right this isn't this isn't how movies are made you can't do this like, this is bad <laughs> this is not okay this is like something you would see on a youtube channel with like 100 subscribers you can't fucking put this on a giant screen it's not okay and like i still just like to believe that's a thing you just do in life both no, because like I, both because there was other parts of the movie where you did it and because you were just doing it in like broad daylight <laughs> in a populated room just in reaction to the tv right beforehand <laughs> If a cut is really jarring, then it's it, it like because I focus a lot. I try to focus <laughs> on the thing that's happening. And if a cut happens, it's really unexpected in a bad way where it's like, oh, OK, the scene's going to change. I get it. If this, if it's just like, OK, something's happening, it goes like, huh, and it just cuts immediately. Like, well, Jesus fucking Christ. All right. And like, especially if it's to like a different angle, but the same conversation. The, I hate that shit. I hate that's where it's right. like two people talking. It does like the back forth, like Star Wars prequel cuts. And then all of a sudden it's like cut now above, and you're like, what the what the fuck? Why am I looking above them? What fucking happened here? We there's have, like, some, something. Well, Jesus Christ! Like, there's some directors focus? that are so bad about that, not keeping the because the, there's like a, a specific cinema theory. I don't know what the term is, but there's it's where your eyes focused, and when you make a yeah. cut, you need to keep that because people are looking at it. Like if there's a face on camera, and and some directors will use that to, to tell a different story. Like there's a face on camera on the left side of the screen. And then you yeah, make it's, a cut it's called vaguely the like, like like the ninety degree rule or something like that. Yeah, there's some or, yeah there's some kind of it's, there's a rule. Yeah, but specifically when you're cutting back and forth between like two people, usually it's like they're on opposite sides of the frame each time you cut back and yeah. forth. Yeah, that's a good a good way to denote precisely that dualism. But which is why it's so jarring. I remember that as well because I, I I didn't watch the first Hobbit on on. Uh, on the theaters because I I, did, I wasn't I was very satisfied with them splitting it into three movies so I was mm-hmm. like ah, I'm not gonna watch it it's probably not not gonna be very good and then I watched it on DVD and it was actually fairly okay uh, and I was like eh, I'm gonna get the d- d- go watch the second one hopefully it's good and I got a I, I got I was given tickets for the pre-release so I went to the theater but like only a few people were there because it was like a 
special deal before the, the actual release date. And it was such a letdown. It's such a long movie as well. Like, it's weird because they split a, 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 basically what was supposed to be two movies into three three-hour long movies. Why didn't they make them two hour long like a normal movie? Just, yeah, they, they also so like... They insisted, on, well. they insisted on splitting around the time Smaug was supposed to happen. So they kind of tried to have Smaug twice. And it was, yeah, I didn't and watch the third movie. I was so, having the, thir- so the third movie just opens with, with this, like a really, really brief thing where just like it's Smaug attacking the town and being, and being defeated. And it has nothing mm-hmm. to do with the rest of the movie. And it, except for the part where like now the treasure is going to be like opened up for grabs. And that's what the movie's kind of about. But like mm-hmm. it's such a bizarre opener because you like under you you undercut the climax of the previous movie by not resolving Smaug and just having credits roll. But then by the time you finally get around to the next movie, like six months or a year later, or whenever it finally came out, it was like the, the momentum's gone now. Now it's just like, oh, here's a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> it's the ending of the. He's like watching the the ending of an episode of, of a TV series before. Yeah, just the, the whole the whole series next. had these kinds of problems, and it was it was frustrating because I. I remember, I remember like arguing with uh, with Joe and Andrew about it because it, 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 I already had problems with the first movie, but I, at that point I was the crazy one, and and then everyone was arguing with me. But it's like <laughs> I was really frustrated that the first movie kept setting up characters and plot lines, but then they never do anything in that movie. They like, like, oh, here's Radagast. Who's Radagast? Uh, uh, it's fan service. It's fan service. He doesn't like show they, up. I, that's the funnier. The, that's it, the funnier part is that as you go through yes. the series. <laughs> And it takes two years, so maybe you forgot over the course of it. But if you go back and see the dumb shit set up in the first movie that didn't go anywhere in that movie, so that it didn't need to be introduced, it you also, in many book, cases, never or... gets introduced in the other movies. So they just yeah, forget exactly. about them. Like, but you could have gone the whole movie read... without ever learning about most of the, the, the fucking wizards, and it wouldn't matter. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. No, Did my you plan, never read the book? Of, of my the plan was to re- I, I, I think I, I think I read it when I was very young or mm. heard it or something. Uh, and my plan was to read the book alongside the movies. Ooh. So, which was really iffy. But I was like, I heard, yeah. I heard where in the book the first movie was going to end. Uh, so I read the first hundred pages of The Hobbit or whatever, and then the movie just wasn't very good so i didn't actually follow through with uh with reading the rest of the book alongside the movies before each one came out uh the hobbit the hobbit is a fun romp the book itself it's so but short it's very short it, yeah it's supposed to be like a children's tale yeah but the thing is well, something that was really obvious to me specifically with radagast and with the sauron and with galadriel for that matter is that because she's not a character in the hobbit is that a lot of the stuff that was added was added to people who had already seen The Lord of the Rings. Yeah, it's to make was, it a better prequel to Lord of the Rings, or that's the but, idea, but it wasn't good at that. But it feels like a sequel, though. It, it They didn't make it as yeah. a... It doesn't, it doesn't feel like a prequel. It just feels, oh, look at this character that I already know. It doesn't yeah, feel like... Yeah, just like Legolas being forced in and so on. Yeah, I think the yeah. Hobbit book was exclusively from the perspective... <clears throat> uh, the perspective of Bilbo. So, like, yes. every time... Every time, like, Gandalf vanishes, like, that's just it. He's just gone until he comes up again. Like, you won't know what he was up to. He might say one line about it, which actually does lead to its own issues with the book, which uh, you get to be like, it's a children's story, who cares? so who cares or whatever. But it is really often unsatisfying <clears throat> how Gandalf will just appear and solve their problems after having not been in the story for the last 60 pages. And you're like, oh, uh, hi, Gandalf. Oh, hi, it's me, the solution to all the problems that we just set up. I'm like, all right, well, that's a little... It's a little unsatisfying for a narrative. And they lean, the they lean in on that. <laughs> yeah. And then they lean in on that in the movie in the movies and make him solve even more problems than they do than he does already in the book. Yeah. It's, there's there's yeah. a lot of adaptation problems there. It the should have been Guillermo kind of del, Tor- del Toro. That's yeah. basically the it's conclusion. Kind of a mess. What happened to Del Toro again? <laughs> like why did he leave? Did oh, they didn't like his take, apparently. Oh. He was yeah, because he didn't he, he didn't like leaving. He was did you, uh, I was, uh, so watching... they just made their own bed then, huh? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, fuck most, most uh, movie studios with really yeah. horrible Lindsay... movie releases make their own bed. Like, they don't... <laughs> Lindsay Ellis has a very good trilogy. I was watching it earlier this week. and uh, Yeah, I've seen it she a few goes times. Through. Yeah, very, very good watch. For somebody who has never watched the third movie, I don't need to watch the third movie. I'll watch her series no. whenever. <laughs> I think uh, 
I think in the the breakdown of that stuff was also how I found the channel just right. W R I T. Oh yeah, that's also a good one. Which I have mixed feelings on that channel. I think that they still make some good content, but they uh there they there was like a kind of spiteful but kind of cathartic like let's tear into this movie angle to the beginning of that channel, and then it became. I'm going to talk like I'm the nerd writer. Like he talks so much like the nerd writer that I have to double check. It's not a second oh. channel of the nerd writer because he like has, he takes the exact audio aesthetic and just kind of presentation style from a much larger channel. And it's really distracting to me because I, I know both channels oh. and I was also kind of already getting tired of the kind of like, like the, the sometimes the kind of triteness of the nerd writer where it's like, these are just such short videos and they're, usually just i i found them often under engaging and like too clean and too like there's not much not having that much to say necessarily uh like, let's yeah. break down why <clears throat> this thing is genius but in six minutes and it's like uh <laughs> <laughs> i get i think that's a type of video that sort of had its place already yeah. youtube these days it's either it's either long term or or like the shorts hashtag shorts have you seen like that I like hour-long deep dives that have a fucking plot twist halfway through that recontextualizes the entire video, which is a genre. And a surprise, a surprise third chapter that you didn't expect, because it's two out of oh, yeah. two in the title. <laughs> oh, yeah, spoiler, that was kind sorry. of one of the earlier ones. If you take Lindsay Ellis as like, a, as like one thing, those uh, Hobbit videos, is like, here's this, this big breakdown about like the history of like the Hobbit movie and how that happened, and like, but also like all the issues with the story and these other stuff and then surprise third part about how it's like ruining new zealand here we go <laughs> like yeah. and like the impact it's happening on real having on real people and like the lobbying and like the how the fucking lord of the rings franchise is so powerful that it fucking rewrites the laws of new zealand and it's like jesus christ and also really good interviews i mean i just that's such a, she did such yeah. a great job there and then i think like there's yeah. like the fo there's the folding ideas uh mm -hmm video about flat earth that's like surprise this is about QAnon. <laughs> uh there's the jenny nicholson video about uh bronies where the surprise reveal oh. is that she's way more into this uh community than you ever thought <laughs> and not... she has an she has an entire sordid history as like an as a voice actor for like an animation parody series <laughs> and like was like she was a celebrity within this community like oh like... and then uh the most recent one was uh sarah zed put out a video about like and then everybody clapped kind of stories from Tumblr where everybody uh, would people just just straight up just make up stories that got increasingly absurd. But because it was a community of largely children and so on and people wanted to th and there was often a catharsis built into the story that uh, mm -hmm. everybody would just believe these things in many cases and share them. And then there's dedicated like subreddits like that happened to the idea that these are all like just laughing at these fake stories that people believe on a regular basis. But like. The whole thing, the whole narrative there is that people think they're above these things and smarter than them. But like the entire, but then the, the plot twist here is that she then goes to the anti SJW community, which is like all these like subreddits. They're just about dunking on, on like trans people and feminists and so on and so forth. And like being so mad at them and this, in, this increasingly shrill and unreasonable purple haired specter that they're always mad about, like this weird fantasy creature that definitely exists according to them. And like, and increasingly because of the like the upvote system on Reddit and the incentives being that that are there, like you gotta find content to get those up upvotes. You gotta have stuff to share that everybody. <laughs> it, it, it has to hit. Oh it has to hit all the buttons of all the stuff that people want to click on, so that they can be mad at you. So be like like Tumblr in action or Kotaku in action, like those kind of subreddits. Like people, like you gotta you gotta share content to Tumblr in action that. Uh, that that'll hit all the buttons that makes them upvote it. And heck, how are you gonna find that? How are you gonna find organic, free range, completely unreasonable, delusional SJWs? And the answer is you don't. You just make fake Tumblr posts, like literally fake <laughs> screenshots of stories and posts that never existed, and then fake that they had a bunch of support, and just post them to the subreddit. And because everyone wants to believe it, because they're already mad at this group of people at, for increasingly fictional it's a reasons. It's industry. Yeah. Oh my god. There would be an entire feedback loop of people making up <laughs> fake SJWs, then getting mad at the fake SJWs, then making up more fake up SJWs, just to chase clout in an infinite loop for points that don't matter. And then, but that has real consequences, because people increasingly think all the stuff is yeah, real, and they keep getting yeah 
mad at the specter of SJWs until the point until the point where you've watched fucking Last Jedi and you're like, Lord, you're in his purple hair, and I'm mad for some reason that a sci-fi character has purple hair, and and, and then you're like, okay, I got, I'm sorry, I got to explain to you why this is this way, because like you'll you you'll, you'll you'll have like somebody that's not clued into the internet being like, why are people mad at that what's this post about the hair and you're like i'm so sorry but here we go i'll explain <laughs> yes. this because it's so fucking <laughs> deranged at some point but like it's like an infinite feedback loop uh and like so like these people think they're so much smarter than the fucking like people that let fall for everybody clap stories but they're themselves just falling for a f- infinite content farm of fake outrage stories that are being generated just to appeal to them directly in a very fox news sort of way where you just manufacture outrage by making up your own fiction as you go and at this point people on the next stage where they kind of started to realize that that stuff was dumb but now we just have stuff like am i the asshole and other subreddits that are also about sharing stories which are increasingly just about making up stories and those stories are very noticeably about like making fun of fat people making fun of trans people or here's a completely unreasonable trans person that like called me transphobic for calling out them out for doing a crime and stuff like that and it's like we're still doing it. We're still doing loops of this. Like we all laughed about. It's gonna happen. I think about, it's gonna happen forever. Yeah, like you laugh about like twelve year olds telling everybody clap stories, and that and that baby was Albert Einstein type shit. But like we're it's, we're not any better. <laughs> the most popular subreddits in on Reddit still do the same thing. It's just people making up stories, and then people getting actually mad at groups of people thinking that these are real stories, which would already be bad. Even if they were real, because they're just anecdotes, and anybody can be an asshole, and it doesn't I have think, anything to do with groups yeah. of people. But it, but it's like porn for just uh, appealing to like, their the preconceived notions yeah. about why they hate groups of people, and infinitely feeding that over and over again. But they're also not real to begin with, so it's triple wrong. <laughs> yeah, but the, yeah, I don't. I, I think I think Reddit needs to. Uh, I, I love plot like twist videos, platforms. though. I love the fucking slow burn reveal that halfway through a video, like, oh, that's what this is about. <laughs> I I remember some videos like that. It's kind of I don't yeah the the examples I haven't watched the latest Sarah Z one yet. Uh, I it kind well, of reminds I spoiled me spoiled it for you. <laughs> that yeah no problem. The um the uh the compulsion to tell made up stories for clout is something that I feel maybe I'm wrong. So, you know, bear with me and correct me if I'm wrong. But it's something that I feel a lot of people go through in their... Maybe boys specifically rather than girls. Um, because I've see, I see that, I, I've seen that a lot, a lot growing up in other friends of mine. Boyfriends specifically not, rather than girlfriends. And I was... Hell, that, hell that's with, the podcasting community. <laughs> <laughs> No, what I mean is like, do you know how kids will be like to each other? Oh yeah, like the other day, my dad totally got shot, and now he's in the hospital. And it's like, oh yeah, and and just to say stuff really, and just to have something to talk about, and have people interested in what they're saying. Uh, and I think there's probably a, a specific age where they where people do that more than more than um, other ages. But do you know what I'm talking about, or is it just in my head? Uh, what like just kids making up stories to get attention? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, that's, that's that's always been a thing. Pretty common. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm. Oh yeah. Okay. So I'm not imagining it, but I was inoculated to it very early because you know the cringe of you feel when you realize that everybody knew you were bullshitting. Yeah. Um, when you that, make, yeah. In so, fact, not even just kids, but like that's that's a whole joke in Paranoia Agent. Like, you remember that, Andrew? Oh, like yeah. the, the, there's, a, yeah. there's a group of old women that all share stories, and they all go, "Oh, stop, stop, stop!" or whatever they do. This one, like this one, like hand gesture all at each other, or like, or like, "Go on, go on," <laughs> yeah. or something like that. And they, they have a whole ritual of telling stories to each other, and they're increasingly tall tales all the time, and they're all <laughs> lies. They're all clearly lies. And the yeah. and part of the gag is that the one char- there's one character that starts picking up on what's happening in the actual main text of the of the uh, show because these are all side characters in the, in the background. They're not, none of them are important. And she's like, mm-hmm. she'll say something that's actually the story, the plot of the anime. And everyone's like, don't, don't just fucking make up stories. Get out of here. <laughs> like they won't believe oh, her. So- and she's the only one that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. But no, make, uh, yeah, just making up stories to make yourself sound interesting is totally a thing. So one of my I, earliest memories of I doing get that, that a lot. There's a, it's like without experiencing, there are times where like I experience stuff. And I'm like, well, I guess I can never tell people this now. Like, because it's <laughs> it's stuff that like, how do you 
how do you say that without it sounding like that where it sounds like you're just looking for accolades or you're looking for like a whoa that was a you know like impressive kind of reaction where you're like mm. i no, this just weird thing happened to me and i just moved on with my life uh, <laughs> from it sometimes but, yeah. The, the act of telling a story gives you a little bit, or telling the story, gives you a little bit of self-reflection in those moments. I, I yeah, feel, I, I mean, feel... I, that's, that, yeah, that's kind of the thing, is as you're telling it back, you're like, is this a good story, a bad story? Should I have said this? Like, like I could tell you the story, without bullshitting you, uh, I could tell you the story about why Fallout 3 was developed by Bethesda is because of me. <laughs> And I'm not bullshitting you. I could tell you that story. I wouldn't be lying, but, but I can't. I can't tell you that story. <laughs> like I made Bethesda by Fallout. I didn't, but I did. I what does that I'm not mean? Tell this. It's yeah, complicated. What, do you, what does that mean? Also, I, you, were, I, you're I, talking about like your earliest memory too, right? Was, was that a thing you were trying to yeah, talk about? Yeah, I was just. I mean, there was. I was like eight years old or something, and I was. I think I was getting into that stage of my life where I wanted people to pay attention to what I was saying or something. And I, 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 rem I got inoculated to, you know, saying bullshit stories for attention because one of the earliest memories I have of doing that is me telling a story to my dad about how I had gone to Disney Disneyland. And he immediately caught my bullshit, obviously. But yes, he, he would have went been on the one it. that took you. He, he, he didn't, I, obviously, I never went, but he 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 went yeah. on with it. He, he, he went along with it, and he said, "Oh yeah, what what happened?" So I spent a uh, I remember it being a, a relatively decent amount of time bullshitting him, and then About he said, "A thing he would have had to take you to." Yeah. So I, the cringe was so real from the age of eight that I'm it's like, a, oh, I, it's I, also I, a children's <laughs> story, so it's completely incoherent. And then the the da da da, absolutely, and da, da, da. <laughs> so it's just like, uh, yeah, that's that's nice, honey. Absolutely, but I, I just, I forever, every time I feel the need, I felt the need of, uh, and I feel, I suppose, the need of being like, oh yeah, well, I made Bethesda by Fallout. I'm like, no, I, nobody's gonna believe that. What the fuck is this claim? What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but it has to do with an lie. email. <laughs> it isn't a lie. That's the thing. It has to do with an email <laughs> and with coincidence, and uh, it probably. And it definitely is not what I'm saying. It's not because they didn't buy it because of me. But I also can't prove that they didn't buy it because of me because it all matches. Uh, it's a it's a fucking <laughs> sensationalist headline where you just lie about the contents of the article. I see. But but at the same time, it, I don't. That's the thing. It's a clickbait lie. Yeah. I. <laughs> we can never I, know how wrong is... you are if we can never get the article. It, <laughs> nobody. It's, it's, beh it's behind a paywall for college students only. I, I struggle to figure out like what stories sometimes I struggle to figure out what stories are stories you should tell actually you know what I'm uh, I'm, th I'm think sorry to cut you off Andrew go for it uh, uh okay let me tell you the story of why Bethesda bought the Fallout franchise instead of Troika the developers of Arcanum and Vampire Bloodlines it's very it's gonna be very quick because I'm gonna let you come to your own conclusions in the Money. summer of of the year in the summer of 2003, I sent an email as a, a, a 13, <laughs> so 2003, I was 16 years old. Yeah, that, that checks out. I sent an email to Bethesda from uh, with my crappy English at the time about a game that I had come up with that I wanted them to develop. And it was a game like Fallout. It was almost a ripoff. And I said, it's like Fallout, but it's a little bit different. Uh, and I got an e I got a reply from that email specifically from Pete Hines. Obviously, I don't know if it was Pete Hines specifically. If it were these days, it would be just the marketing department signing as him. But back then, Bethesda wasn't very big. And it was specifically signed as Pete Hines. And he said, thank you very much. We love your enthusiasm. But we, we, we I mean, we don't do games from people outside the company. And I was like, oh, there we go. That's that's my, that's, ah, I had my shot, right? Mm -hmm. At the age of 16, I, I felt very accomplished. The thing is, after that, and I didn't know this until years later, I, I only connected the dots like four or five years after that. Um, after that, the Interplay started having trouble uh, with the development of Fallout 3 uh, that at the time was being developed by the original company. So they sold the IP and they wanted to sell it to many people and Troika specifically the company that was making or that at the time was making Vampire Bloodlines Troika uh, was in on the bidding Bethesda came in and bought it for like five times more than Troika was able to afford so Bethesda bought the, the rights but the thing is 
Fallout never really fit with Bethesda's game style or even really their So you fan ruined base, Fallout. Really. <laughs> I think I ruined Fallout. That's the thing. Like <laughs> this is this is the story basically. That's this is this is it. I I've, I've told it all. And I I, th I don't know what to think about it. <laughs> and to this day, I don't know what to think about it. I need to I need to ask Pete Hines if he if he, if he actually answered my email in the summer of two thousand and three, because <laughs> I might have given him the idea. Because he, he, he he's the head. He was the head at the time, and he's still the head of PR. And he he's close friends with, um, what's the Todd? Yeah, Todd Howard. It, like he's he's big big honcho in the company. And the company at the time was very small, so it you know it's things can have different dynamics. So, what do you guys think? Did I, did I, was I the culprit? Did I murder my favorite franchise? Because that's basically. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that a lot of the a lot of the people at Bethesda probably played Fallout and had an interest mm. in the the franchise. Especially yeah. when you say something like Fallout is going for sale, that sounds like a really hot commodity. Um, mm, I wouldn't. Yeah, I, I don't wouldn't think so you certain. had. I don't think you had to like clue people in that Fallout existed yeah no i i'm pretty i'm pretty confident that if someone that even back then someone was like hey i'm gonna sell the fallout franchise anybody want to buy it like that's not a a light thing to say like bethesda definitely would be like yes it kinda, that it kind of feels delicious. like when somebody Please. thanks me for honoring their request for a let's play and i'm like i recorded the entire playthrough before you said that comment <laughs> Yeah, like the, oh, the, yeah. before you could or even like, or like I, wow like, they're listening to me they did hear the builds i suggested they're like i I'm four episodes ahead on Hades. <laughs> if, if I bet you anything, I I would bet you that they were in the development of making a, a uh, an RPG, a 3D RPG game, and didn't have an idea for, like, didn't have a brand for it. And when Fallout as as, went up for sale, they said, "Oh fuck yeah!" And they just no, grabbed I, that. that. As far as we like, know, that that's not how they worked. They only started is that development because Fallout Three has nothing to do with Fallout. It's literally just yeah, its that's own true. That's weird. true weird little it, uh, nugget it's in the world. with guns and oblivion well, that, wasn't out yet at the time but that's what i'm saying is it. like it's it's so not even it's so devoid what, of fallout yeah. that it has to be a game that was being <clears throat> produced well before fallout was in their hands and then when the title went up for sale like oh, yeah well, let's just grab that we can slap that shit right on top just I add some stupid guys in armor done it's not Nailed implausible it. it's not like, implausible but i don't think like i think Star we know Fox more Adventures. or less what happened have you seen they, Bethesda? They, none of their ideas are original. They just slap shit on top of stuff, like garbage that they've made. They're I'm like, playing Look at Prey this right now. It needs I'm a name. I'm playing Prey right like, now. They did the same thing with Prey. They were develop Arcane was developing System Shock 3, and then they had the Prey IP right <laughs> there, and they just slapped the title on it. Yeah. Okay. And said, Prey, ah, now Prey's, it's a spiritual system. better system. anyway. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah, Bethesda, yeah. Bethesda does that, though. I said they it as an afterthought, but that they joke they actually makes sense of the... Uh, the fucking Star Fox Adventures, where it's like, yeah, that's what oh, happened too. It's like, just take the, we got a, we got a Zelda game. It's got it got a, it's our own Zelda like kind of like uh, Okami and and uh, Beyond Good and Evil. But like ours is Dinosaur Planet, and they're like, make it Star Fox though. The the spaceship <laughs> Fox man. Yeah, make it Star Fox though. He'll he'll use a staff, and beat people with it, and escort a dinosaur around. <laughs> because it's just like they just took the game they already had and like yeah but now it's Star Fox there's like one spaceship mission for 30 seconds at the beginning of the game to trick you <laughs> and then the rest of the game you're just playing a Zelda uh, a Zelda style game but Star Fox is there <laughs> it's, it's, here's Fox McCloud he you know well known for his his like com his like Being... cargo pants and his battle staff <laughs> I, uh... ah. that was I I <laughs> All I'm saying is I, still want to play I can't be I can't be blamed for deep down thinking I might have had something to do with it. <laughs> I mean, if that's the case, then I'm probably like the single handed reason that most games are as bad as they are. And I'm the <laughs> entire reason why H Bomber Guy and Mandalore Gaming made pathologic videos. <laughs> Because I was like, please save this franchise in the comment section. And then they, they they heard me and they printed out my comment and framed it on the wall. And they're like, just for you, Keith, I'm going to work on this video for four months. <laughs> I can believe that. But I'm just in a cloud of 5,000 people that are all leaving fucking comments everywhere. I do, I do think, sorry to burst your bubble, Keith, literally. Well, not literally, but in the, yeah. <laughs> I think he had mentioned. My literal bubble. <laughs> I think he uh, H Bomber guy mentioned Pathologic in one of his early videos in passing. Like he knew about the game at least. No. Oh, I'm sure he wrong. 
Are you sure? <laughs> I, I'm pretty Factually sure he was correct. <laughs> I remember him saying things about Pathologic before his big video on Pathologic. <laughs> that was because he talked to me first. Yeah. That was, I, <laughs> I, I was that baby. <laughs> <laughs> but but let's, go, let's go back to Andrew's. Why, why are vi video games bad because of you? Well, I say video, video games. games garbage, so everyone just stopped trying. Ah, there's no way uh, you broke the will of the games yeah. industry. It was There's you. No, I mean, if you're never going to make anything good, why bother trying at all, right? And that's why we have Cyberpunk. <laughs> uh, that's the culmination Andrew made of Cyberpunk. Like, I made Fall 3. Decades of me just saying all video games are garbage. And there's like, <laughs> fine, we'll actually make garbage then. Here, that's what they're enjoy. Yeah. That's the, <laughs> like, oh. AAA gaming is, is the... Remember when Fallout oh. 76 wanted a th 100 euros or $100 a year? They wanted, they wanted the you to pay for the game again every year, basically, because they're trying to make a live service. More than again. The game doesn't cost yeah. 100 Yeah, <laughs> they're, trying to, they're trying to make like a live service Fallout game. It's like, hey, people play that our games for 300 hours and brag about it. What if we trick them into continually paying for it more instead of just, you know, modding it forever? <laughs> How do we get rid of mods? Because... We got to get rid of mods. <laughs> I said, this, yeah, that. that's what they did, that, basically. That, that, yeah. Isn't it unbelievable? Well. Isn't it unbelievable that that's what Bethesda ended up doing with their new Fallout game? Is they got rid of mods for Fallout? They released the game that can't be modded. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it can, not, but it doesn't make enough money. I, I mean, they released a game that uh, they released a game that has its own unique mods in the form of bugs. Like the game <laughs> is uh, the game I mean, is is yeah. All games are made via, like, top-down choices by some detached executive that runs the company but doesn't have to actually deal with making the game and especially doesn't care about, like, what makes franchises good or what the audience wants, but just what will make money and what the what makes yeah. business sense or whatever. So they'll be like, yeah, we'll all take that single-player RPG and turn it into a multiplayer live service game with no mods when we're the most all... famous company in all of the world for moddable games. Yeah, Fallout 76 that, is basically what happens if you were to install a new copy of Skyrim and then have somebody go on the Steam Marketplace, download a bunch of random mods for Skyrim, and then you start the game of having no knowledge what those mods are. So <laughs> they every just time jump you play, you. <laughs> yeah, the, every time you're playing, something new and weird happens, and you can't figure out if that's part of the game or if that's a mod that got installed. That's, that's kind, of, that's kind of an interesting playthrough like concept. Like, yeah, they do that with, with the. Dark Souls every once in a while. That, like, I, I, remember, I remember Skyrim, I had a mod where it turned the horse into uh, uh, Johnny Wasau. Oh, God. Or Tommy Wasau. And so, like, the horse looked like him and just said lines from the room. Why and... won't you love me? Yeah, so, like, uh, every time you summoned it, yeah, so every time you summon it, it's like, I didn't hit her. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, what, what is this? Like, I had no concept. Like just I had no concept a, yeah. of what it was. It's all yeah, memes it without just, context. Although yeah, it was, it was so pretty like, funny that when they replaced dragons with Thomas the Tank Engine and he just come charging through and terrorizing the town. <laughs> memes <laughs> without context. Context. That's like watching. That's like reading Reddit on the last week page. It's like watching a foreign language comedy film and not knowing the language. <laughs> Fallout 76 is like, like even on a on an actual game design perspective, it's really baffling because it well it's not baffling as in like I, I understand what they were going for, but it's a it's just bad because it's a game that fo like the, what is the game about? If you, I played it for a little bit, so I uh, for like four or five hours, so I only have that much experience. But as far as I can tell, it's a I game about gathering. I couldn't get anyone gathering. to play with me, so I never played it. <laughs> Fallout 76. Yeah. I wasn't gonna do it alone. I was like, we, no, I mean, don't do it alone. It's, it's a, definitely it's a game have about to laugh gathering, at it with someone. It's a, a game about gathering resources, as in, in the form of junk around the, this post-nuclear wasteland where everything was gone to shit. Uh, and then you carry those resources to a base that you made, and you deconstruct them into materials so that you can make more things. So, the incentive so, b behind you doing that is necessarily making a base right but the problem is making shitty a base... part of fallout 4 yeah well absolutely. there was many yeah. shitty parts of fallout 4 but people pretending <laughs> but yes. that the base building had depth were frustrating it's just it takes way too long for what it is if it <clears throat> if what you ac can accomplish i think personally if you what you can accomplish in five hours of building a base in fallout 4 you could accomplish in 10 minutes it would be a good a good thing but you can't because it's so obtuse it's such a weird 
it's a weird part of the game. Either way, the point is, it's just a game that... Fallout 76 is just a game that focuses on you gathering materials and building new things. But every single gameplay mechanic, like carry weight, or the actual inventory management, or the sort lack of sorting, or the lack of ability to store things properly, it's every single thing is made so that it is difficult for you to carry materials around and use them. It's like a mobile game. You know how mobile games are done, like the point of the mobile game is killing enemies, but every single aspect of the game is sort of like designed to make you kill enemies less efficiently, uh, efficiently so that they can sell you like microtransactions so you can make it easier. Except in the case of Fallout 76, they don't actually sell you microtransactions to make it easier. They just make it hard on purpose. <laughs> and it's baffling. It's, I, uh. it's one of the things just kind of thrown together in the form that it is just for the sake of it but without any like like it's like just the tools they had on hand and it's not necessarily built from the ground up for the actual yeah. intended play style they're encouraging it's like i don't I like i don't so. know i don't know what fortnite's like now because boy do i have no interest but i played <laughs> the first day of fortnite when it became a battle royale and i was and like i had played like 10 hours of the sync of the the co-op campaign that existed before then before it became battle royale the, the fortnite people actually know as fortnite and i was so confused cuz the the uh, the the entire building system in fortnite is incredibly bafflingly clunky and full of a billion completely redundant structure things that you would never want to actually build for any reason except for just aesthetics like, you can make your beautiful, carefully crafted, shitty wooden fort that has, like... Like, you have, like... You can add archways, like, over, like... <laughs> like, like instead of just being, like, here's shack walls and here's the entrance because there's no wall there and here's a floor and a ceiling. Like, you basically just need floors, ceilings, walls, and stairs and you're basically done with what you would need for a battle royale. But they have, like... Yeah, you can add, like... Like, when you have an open wall, you can, like, that opening there, you can have, like, triangular inserts on the corners to, like, curve the corners to make kind of an arch and, like, look like an entryway. And, like, you really prettied up. There's, like, there's, like, there's a huge number of redundant things you can add, like, support beams and things like that. And then I played the Battle Royale, and it was full of all that. And it was still the most awkward, like, take your hands off of all of the real buttons you use to play the game and reach over here and press really weird combinations of buttons to navigate this strange building menu that's full of shit like weird diagonal corner inserts and shit hmm. in your competitive shooter and it's like when the like most of these don't have a purpose but also like the controls are so trash and bizarre and and badly implemented that you can't like who would like it was the it was insane that they expect you to build stuff in the <laughs> middle of a firefight because <clears throat> you're supposed to be building between the waves in a in a really chill like wave based shooter where you basically, I think you just tell the game when to start happening again. <laughs> like it was designed for that pacing and they forced it into a battle royale just because A, their game was failing and they were desperate and B, that's just what was popular and what they could easily convert their existing engine into for lower cost. And so they In just did it. So that's like the Fallout shit where it's like none of these things fit together, but just fucking we want this. We got these tools. That's going to be that. Star Fox Adventures. In hindsight, that was one of the most successful and well thought out decisions in the gaming industry the fact that they just made it a battle rail that they and, ruined and, fortnite yeah <clears throat> yeah because that doesn't mean that it, like, but that doesn't mean that it was good in terms oh, of sure, making a sure. game good <laughs> for sure for sure I, yeah i'm not debating that it was just but like it's, it's it was kind just of interesting we have, we have the resources and this is the timing and then they did it and it worked out for them and that's it's it a, yeah it's and they abused all of their employees to do it <laughs> that that too hooray and they continued to yeah, and they get more money from a, trying to get, they get more, money more from a despotic uh, government that uh, imprisons such people trash content too. Like I said, Fortnite. When I said it's when like, I said look, games, wow, we got we got to crunch and ruin people's lives so they can make more skins. Yeah. Well, in fairness, and even though they're shit, everybody does it, and everybody's shit. That doesn't, again, it goes back to, I think I ruined video games by saying yeah, well, yeah, everything no, garbage, so they just nightmare. made garbage now. That's <laughs> just the capitalistic system. You know how it is. If they have more money, they have more say over the employees, and then they are allowed to, well, not allowed, but the employees. What are the employees going to do? Go work somewhere else? There's always the frustrating back and forth yeah. where it's like people are, people get really mad about a controversy about a particular game and how that particular developer abuses their employees and so on. And then I'm like, yeah, and I'm like, yes, 
join me in the indie sphere. Come here. And they're like, no, I'm just going to pivot to this other AAA company because they're better. And like, they're not, though. <laughs> they just haven't Actually, got they've they just haven't gone viral for being bad this year. Just, in many cases, they've survive. gone viral for being bad last like, year. <laughs> yeah. Is you just, it, we, 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 yeah, but the problem is you don't you can't survive that way. No, there's no you way can. to like. No, it's no, almost impossible to no. like. I'm gonna consume ethically. It's almost like there's a phrase for no, this. No, no, there's no consumption that is ethical. That's not the consumption yeah, isn't I, the part no, that I, you need I, to worry I about. I mean that like there's no way you could survive as a as reasonable a adult uh, oh, without mean, oh, right. working at a, a a real established business because like you need healthcare if you have children. Yeah. Like what yeah. are you're gonna pay the for system, their medical stuff? It's not gonna. That's why you're gonna. That's why it's yeah, a systemic it's just, issue. Oh no! When I said join me in the indie, I was saying that about the consumers. Like yes, let's uh, let's yeah, leave yeah, the, the horrible AAA world behind. Not not saying uh, that everybody should like quit their jobs. Although that would eventually that would definitely actually actually well, that would potentially reshape would work, everything yes. in a positive way ultimately <laughs> yes, but yeah that's, yeah, that's how you that's, do it if, if it people bought way unites. more indie games then yeah, well, there'd be a much better cottage industry of people being borderline self-employed instead of working for nightmare conglomerates but everyone's like i need the graphics nah people, I, the, the, people I complain about the graphics looking... so often on games that Look, are it's great looking <laughs> i'm gonna say this right <laughs> now it's 2021 Games still look like games. You failed. Give it up. Graphics I don't aren't going to ever you, look Andrew. like the fucking real world, and I don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> Graphics it's will never look agree. better than Azuric for the Xbox. I don't agree with you. I, I every time, like I play a lot of old games and indie games, and I have every time I play a new game, I'm like I'm baffled by how good it looks. I I'm never going to think that I'm actually standing in a Banjo Kazooie world, and mm -hmm. all that really matters. And that's to me. the height. And, <laughs> And that's it. If you cannot make me feel like I'm literally Banjo Kazooie inside of TikTok Mountain, and this is real life, Look, then you have failed to make Etsy. a fundamental good graphical video game. <laughs> there are so shops on Etsy anymore. where you can buy a suit, and then you put a VR headset on. And what? Tur Sit turn in darkness because no one's ever made a good looking replication the of that. Turn the RTX on, and then you're good to go. <laughs> it's. But no, I, I am taken aback by how the fidelity Graphics level at, at times when I play like the newest Capcom game and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> or like, yeah, when I played yeah. uh, The Last of Us Part 2 or God of War, which I was like, and in, in many cases, I'm like a year late to these games and I'm like, oh, fuck. And they look amazing. This is really yeah. impressive. I'm playing Prey I'm right sure now. I'm not sure if it's worth 2017, it. And it's, it's, it's not. That's what frustrates me. Like, God of War is a good example. It's like, wow, this looks amazing. This would be great if it had a game to play. Because in, in many like, cases, it, the, game, the, the games are like, like the, the way that their employees are treated and like the amount of money put into it. I'm like, this just doesn't feel worth it for this fidelity level. Like, it's like the novelty is there, but you kind of get used to it and then you get over it. But also, it comes at, it, yeah, it often comes at the expense of the game. Because like these incredibly beautiful games are often incredibly clunky because there's so many concessions made to make them look good all the time so like the camera has to be kind of annoying because it's always a third person camera where your character's on the far right of the screen and so you're like rotational axis is wrong and you can't see your feet and like it's a camera not designed to be played but to look good and be cinematic and the actions are always like animation priority which is good for something like dark souls or uh monster hunter but applying it to every genre willy-nilly isn't necessarily a good thing like it has a it has a genre purpose not just a cinematic purpose but they're like no if we make the animations play a specific way all the time then it can never look bad and then that also comes with like your character has to walk with like this irritating inertia that we've been com complaining about ever since the first red dead redemption where you would like try to walk in a door but you slightly miss then you try to turn around to walk back in the same door but his turning radius is so fucking wide well, he walks into the other side of the door and you're like motherfucker <laughs> just go in the direction the joystick's going but rockstar who are shit are also stuck in GTA 4 mode since GTA 4. So yeah, the Rockstar is a bit of a an outlier in regards to the animations. I feel. Yeah, but I just, I just mean like there's there's there's, a lot, there's concessions made to make the games look good that often actively hinder the playing of the game. Yeah, yeah, I, like yeah. I I beat God of War. I would never play it again. I've played the old God of Wars multiple times, but like I would never I play the new God of War again. It sucked, dude. It was God such of a War, pain. I think like, I, it, I I was not a fan of God of War as a franchise, so I actually liked the remake, the new the reboot more. But I had a lot of gripes with it still. I wanted a hack and slash. What the fuck happened? I, that's the whole premise of the game. It's a hack and slash game. Jesus Christ! And now it's like, well, do you want to babysit for fucking sixty hours? 
I was like, oh, no. <laughs> to be fair, I, I don't really think it. Don't. I don't think it like had any babysitting mechanics. They're Every just, time I was just, in the middle just, of doing anything, there just anything. was another character. Oh, along here's the a cutscene where the boy fucks something up, and now something goes on. <laughs> Fucking damn it, kids! Sit yeah, the but fuck it, down. but it, but it wasn't like an escort something. quest game. You weren't if, having no, to deal with the trio. But the di- okay, so the juxtaposition Atreus? here is when you play when you play the original God of War. Is it Atreus you, the, is Atreus the horse that dies in the Swamp of Sorrows? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> in a I, in a friending story. Like, the thing is, like with original God of War, it's like it's basically like what happens if you gave a train two giant fucking uh, blades and just made it keep going forward and spin them. Like you, nothing could stop you but your own inability to kill things. You're just you're literally a force of nature constantly moving forward. But like in God in the regular in the new God of War, and you fucking called it God of War, you fucking asshole. Like there's a whole <laughs> goddamn fucking trilogy. And so like God At that of point, War there was like six games. Yeah, like whatever, <laughs> God of War 2018 or whatever the fuck these shitty titles are. Like then it gets rid of the whole idea and it's like now it's a big sprawling narrative where you're not not only is like the main game still technically canon but not we're not going to talk about it kind of. We're going to reference it, but we're not going to like you didn't have to play those games. It it doesn't matter. And so God of War, not that God of War, this God of War uh, <laughs> doesn't <laughs> Does it like all the combat is really stiff and clunky because it feels like it wants to be Dark Souls, but it's not going to commit to the Dark Souls combat, which is yeah, I don't like I think Dark that's Souls the biggest combat, problem. but at least it's functional. Like you can play Dark Souls combat and like yeah, it works in the concept of like fighting the enemies. Where in God of War, it feels like ass. Where you're like, okay, I just I have three weapons. Switching to different weapons can be smooth, except like you have to switch to weapons while doing a middle of a combo, or else it's an awkward switch. And doing that switch by like takes away time from you, and that time is something you need to continually doing attacks because like the whole point of when you're doing boss fights is you need to be keep, like ramping up attacks multiple times. But like you need to be swapping the types of attacks you do based on the different types of enemies you're fighting. And so you have three weapons, multiple different moves for those weapons, and different bosses that you fight those diff- that you do different combos with on them. And none of it feels rewarding or fun. It feels like a complicated mess. That only yeah. at the end of the day looks good. Like when you're watching, when yeah. you watch it back, it looks really fucking cool. But when you're playing it, you're sitting there like, I'm going to fucking throw this controller on the fucking world. Like, stop. <laughs> this sucks. Like, I just, I just want to kill him. Like, why can't I just kill the guy? Like, fuck, dude. The, they even give you the stupid blades from fucking God of War and they suck. Like, how did you fuck this up? Like, the, blades, the blades from the original God of War are the best fucking weapons ever made in a hack and slash game. They're seriously the fucking penultimate weapon. You're just a nightmare fucking that tornado. <laughs> he uses that a lot. Well, because the, the greatest weapon of all time is always a gun. But, uh, but the penultimate doesn't refer good, good to save. quality at all, though. Whatever, sorry. I keep, I keep save, thinking good that. Save. It's, that was it's good the save. ultimate fucking weapon of all time in a hack and slash game. It seriously is. You feel so good using those weapons because you're just literally a tornado you're spinning around you're doing fucking <laughs> weird cartwheels with your arms you're doing f- people are just like what the fuck is ha- is this a dance per- per- like recital what the fuck there is such Kratos? an intense Calm style to that weapon. Like, <laughs> it, it's so good I it's a weapon that it, it. it's a weapon that doesn't even work with a third person following camera no because you literally so have irritating. you have to have that long distance devil may cry bayonet a camera the camera because back. The, ca- the weapon's designed to be seen in its like full scale and first in like the could've... borderland first person camera you're like you're yeah. just seeing forward you don't even see how, what the chains are doing or alternatively colonel they could have just not added them to the fucking or, game yeah, for sure <laughs> like you could have just made a game without these fucking iconic weapons that have a very specific and unique feel to them that then you give it to me and i go finally some fucking real food and then i start playing them and i'm like how did you fuck this up? Like, this is the one thing I wanted. You give it to me and it sucks. Fuck. Like, it's it's so baffling how God of War just looks phenomenal, but is just such a bad game at its core because it isn't a God of War game. And it's like, why? Why did you do this? I think you could have just fucking made anything else. Like, you could have made a Norse mythology version of God of War and just not fucking called it that. Like, it would have been okay. I would have liked it more. 
because it would have had no pre pre-existing love or nostalgia for a series that you then just like threw on the ground and went like yeah but that that's not what gamers want to play and i'm like i don't fucking care about them it is a victim of the playstation first party nightmare where you there's just every game has to be the order 1866 which is the one i always laugh about because that's the one that nobody that didn't do well but it's it's always yeah this exact same third person cinematic camera everything moves at this pace it has this exact style of graphical fidelity and rendering style and like all of their prop all their popular franchises slowly converge into being the same style until you just it's until games that should be way more different than they are like god of war and horizon zero dawn and uncharted are more similar than they should be like they're they're not yeah. the same games but boy, they would ben- they, there's so much more range to what a video game can be. And those settings and ideas support those, ide- those diff- completely different play styles. And it's, it's shown in, in, in part because of the fact that, like, yeah, like you, you take a game like God of War that has history. And you're like, yeah, that's what it was like before. Like, they, it, it was a completely different style of game. But they were like, nah, like Devil May Cry might sell copies. But the PlayStation style, the thing that we think sells copies, is this exact formula. But- so basically everything has to... to be that formula unless it's like something like fucking Spider-Man where they can't figure out how to force it to be that. But even Spider-Man does do that sometimes. Like when you're when you when you walk up to doing the cutscenes for stuff, it does it puts the camera in your fucking shoulder and yep. zooms out a little bit and you're like, motherfucker, <laughs> stop doing it. Yep. I'm gonna fucking kill you. Stop. And it's just it's a unit mover. That's all it is. These games just exist to sell more PlayStations or sell you know, more Xbox or whatever. And that's like that's so depressingly boring because like I else? don't I don't want to buy a console to play a same game. I want to buy a console because it has a game that I can't get anywhere else. I can that's, get yeah, fucking yeah. shoulder blade camera interesting game. It's called Sekiro. It's on the fucking goddamn everything. Just play that. It's a better game. Like fuck. <laughs> like it's Do you know do you know what else? Fallen New Vegas also does that. The over-the-shoulder third-person camera. There's yeah, but nobody uses what? it. Nobody, yeah, yeah. But if you if you zoom out, it does that as yeah. well. Sekiro, I, I don't, Sekiro like, doesn't I, have a shoulder I, I, camera, though. No, I'm saying, like, the, the, the bat, if you want to, like, look behind somebody, like, if, the, the, if you want to have a fun combat game where you look behind your character... <laughs> Sekiro's on every console. You don't need, or on everything, every platform. You don't need to buy a fucking PlayStation to get the the whatever the God of War thinks it's offering you. Go buy like a better game on any platform. You don't need a PS4 to experience this. Like it is, it is nice it that is. From Software still uses the correct third person camera. <laughs> could you imagine matters? playing dark souls like that you're just like Whew. i'm gonna roll now and you're like oh something on my left i can because that's well, what i God guess of War i can't like. see that like <laughs> also that that game with the with the dead people what was this called the corpse game mortal shell mortal shell yeah that also is over the shoulder <laughs> yeah, right? there's, there's been a few games that try to crunch the difference between a dark souls game and modern AAA ps4 style like popular games and try to figure out how to mix the two styles and it's just it's just not this doesn't fit well cameras are supposed to serve their purpose of being able to see stuff like having it be just about making the get the game look good like get this perfect angle where you see this all this fidelity of your character's visuals i'm immediately mad if a third person camera doesn't have my character centered on the screen so that my fucking rotational yeah. axis doesn't even fucking follow the middle of the screen like it should be a symmetrical rotation like how insane is it to think about how many third person shooters there are out there with with competitive modes where you fight other players where every single person just sees more to their right than they would see to the left god of war (laughs) you just see more in one direction than the other one because your camera's to the right for some reason (laughs) not to mention just the irritation of how in competitive shooters it's really stupid that you can hide behind a wall but still see past it like I hate yeah. that. I hate that. Third Where you person. can like you can either take cover or just crouch somewhere and your camera can see the whole area. So you can ambush people without having to have take the risk of actually exposing yourself, which just makes the game shittier. Yeah, third it's, person just is a camera that is overused. And I think in a multiplayer it's, it's scenario. Just melee only. Melee only. If your game doesn't have melee, it's not, melee it should be it's, first person. Even in melee, if it's single player, that's it's so exploitable. Like every time I do that in a single player game, where I know I'm looking around a corner, 
even though my character can't see around the corner, I know exactly that I'm doing something <laughs> yeah, wrong. Yeah, but not, I don't care about cheating against NPCs. No, uh, it's fair enough. I, think, I just think it's really stupid if you're playing, like, Overwatch, and you're like, well, my Widowmaker can see around corners, but not in, like, the way that where she uses her actual abilities to do it, which have cooldowns and costs, but just, like, no, like, I, I, can, I can play in third-person mode as Tracer, Ball so I can that. see everybody. Yeah, Ball but Ball's that, weird. <laughs> Yeah, but he gets a third-person camera, and he can just sit behind a wall and see people walking forward. It's yeah. really shitty. I hate it's like, that. It's a, I think it's uh, Ball and Reinhardt. Uh, Rein, Reinhardt technically can. Reinhardt he, ambushing yeah. is the funniest concept ever, though. Yeah, like, that's a, it's a really <laughs> odd uh, choice. But Also, it's got to be unwieldy, because you need to have the shield out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you have to shield out. You just stand far. You just stand a little bit behind, so they can't see the shield poking out through the door. Yeah. <laughs> and then you just turn the camera, and you can see people yeah, no, walking through the wall. And it's just like, all right, well, you could also. I mean, Overwatch is also a, a fucking mess sometimes. Like, if you're in the spawn, you can technically see other people's spawns. Um, really? Yeah, they're uh, so like some some of the cameras for like changing your character are at other were like for a while we're at other people's spawns and so the the one of the strategies was to to wait uh in spawn room until the other team spawned because you would see them all leave out the door and you can and see you'd what, know they what, they, what they were yeah that's really There's, funny video games are, are especially competitive video games are just full of fucking weird messes weird mistakes but cameras are rough cameras are a hard thing to try yeah. to figure out how to place on people properly and i i understand that i get that uh but don't don't put them in a way if, if you're ever making a camera and you go man this is a great cinematic angle you failed at making a camera take it away do it again it needs to be a camera that says wow this feels great to use like this feels great to look around with because that's what that's what it's there for the camera isn't there for me to get impressed it's there for me to functionally be able to play your game like that's the only reason that i can see it's That's, the difference between visceral and cerebral, basically. It's the difference between a game and a movie. I don't want to oh, play a that. movie. I want to play a game. If but, you want to make can... a movie, make a movie. <laughs> but you can have you can have you can have that sort of cinematic appeal in games without sacrificing gameplay. That's called a cutscene, and that is the time to use cinematic cameras, not the game. Yeah. You can do the you can do the little cute thing that some games do where it's like press the trigger to zoom in on the thing and then your camera gets taken away from you and it goes to a nice object or whatever. That's fine. You can do that where I, I'm given the choice if I give a shit or not. But don't make the presumptuous choice that I care more about seeing the world that you've crafted more than I care about seeing my character. And because you know, I don't, I never you know, do. The problem is <laughs> it's people, people playing i'm I'm being facetious now it's people playing the first tomb raider and you know how in first tomb raider you basically lock your third person you're in third person view and you lock your character onto the enemies with a button and then you fire with another button and you don't even need to look at the enemies and it's it's super it's like lara will just shoot the enemies if she sees them as long as you're locked onto them and I mean, people it's... didn't like that People played that game and it was like, yeah, well, the shooting could be a little bit more like Doom. And then they made the new Tomb Raiders, where it is a little bit like Doom. You kill a lot of people in those games. My thing, too, is Doom like, is it, a confusing comparison, maybe. Yeah, Doom, Doom's kind <laughs> um, of weird. It was, the, uh, it was from back then, though. It's more I'm like just, Nathan Drake. It's just, she just, Tomb Raider just kills a lot of people. Well, yeah, that's exactly what happened. It. Yeah, and asinine yeah, yeah. people will be like, "Tomb yeah. Raiders would inspired Uncharted." It's like, yeah, but stuff doesn't exist in a vacuum. And yeah, like Uncharted was so popular that Tomb Raider was just like, "We're gonna make Uncharted games." And so <laughs> they were specifically like, like everything in every way that Uncharted differed from previous Tomb Raider games became what the next Tomb Raider games were. I'm yeah. not. Uh, I don't want to like. I'm it was an inspiration I, Oribus. <laughs> I'm being facetious because obviously there are people who enjoy or, this or sort an of inspiration gameplay. Sixty nine. <laughs> gross <laughs> nice i was video games are just pooping back and forth between each other no uh it's uh no i i honestly i would if you if you must if like some kind of way overpaid out of touch jackass comes up and says there has to be a cinematic camera at the very least give me the functionality to take it away like give me <laughs> like a setting in my in the settings where i can say turn off this fucking awful camera 
and yeah. like bring it back to normal real video game world so that yeah. way i can just enjoy the game <laughs> i hit a point in god of war where i was like okay i see what this game is it's just like it's just this big visual spectacle that you like lightly interact with and you like you have a series of cooldowns and super abilities so whenever a fight happens you pretty much just rotate between all of them you just press all of your buttons to do the big showy attacks and then the fight's yeah. over and if you it's... really fuck up then you have to start over and try again but for the most part it was like kind of mindless and showy and it was kind of fun in that way as just being showy and silly but then at the end of the game they're like but we want you to care about our mechanics now so they're like here's this like roguelike dungeon of infinite grinding and here's this series of like was it the valkyries you're supposed to fight and they're all like increasingly difficult mega bosses but they're also kind yeah. of look the same so it's kind of la lacking in content but also like they demand so much of you and i'm like this game isn't really designed to be hard <laughs> like it doesn't really its mechanics don't really stand up to that level of intensity this isn't like fury or something where everything's really tight and reliable and the cameras are and the camera and the controls are on your side like they're kind of not they don't really enable that kind of play style so you're kind of forced like you, you, i'm sure there's, i know there's people that like it but it's not really a system that feels like it is supported by the game around it and so it's it's just like the game it's going to be much more frustrating than it ever needed to be just because the game doesn't really play well when you take it to that level and for many reasons including the fact that its camera is just the worst for fighting up like mobile bosses like they're all jumping around yeah. and hopping around and the car the screen's covered in 50 particle effects and poison effects and that shit's happening and your attacks fill the screen with all their spectacle and it's just you so quickly just can't even tell what you're seeing on the screen and the the animations are so clunky and specific that like you can't like react to things correctly so like like any game if you practice enough you'll get there and some people just see any challenge as a thing that's worthy and that they that they want to see and everything but like compared to so many other games including the ones that are famously hard these days god of war just didn't feel designed for any of that end game content to be ideal so I was just like, <laughs> no, <laughs> which is just a thing I do in certain playthroughs where I'm just like, mm -mm -mm -mm, not that part. Nope, nope, nope. Because I, like, I did it. I I beat all the Valkyries. I killed. Yeah, you were very mad. I, <laughs> yes, that was back when I used to come to your house to play Zero Escape and you were having a new venting process each week over your experience of playing God of War. And I broke that game still, by the way, I. I managed to make that game shit itself. Cause you break every game somehow. I get, yeah. I got, I got the, uh, I got my son. I bullied my son into the ledge of a, an elevator uh, <laughs> and I was trying to kill him. And instead he started phasing out of existence. And so he was, he was That's better. He was, uh, he was basically <laughs> pulsating so fast. That Dad, I don't feel so good. <laughs> I was, well, so I was sitting there and I was like, I was, I was looking I was like, oh, okay, so I guess we're supposed to reach there. And then I turned the camera around, I'm like, boy, bo boy, what the fuck are you, boy, stop, what are you doing? He's like, I was like boy, boy, get out, what are you doing? It's <laughs> like, you're phasing out, like, you can't leave me alone, I want to leave. And he's like, Pop. and he just like phased back into normal. And I was like, all right, all right. Uh, they have a wall back. Well, there's a, it's just to talk about like the cost of this amalgaming of uh, video games or just like amalgaming what? uh homogenization of video games it's it's, it's a lot what like it cinema everything <laughs> it's a, well that's that's part of what i'm talking about is fucking thanos is the uh <laughs> it's, it's like how modern movies like so much in, uh, back when we had theaters <laughs> so much of the entire <laughs> screen space in theaters was dedicated entirely to not only competing superhero franchises but multiple movies from the same superhero franchise that were airing in parallel and then like star wars and a couple of other things but like one specific style of blockbuster thing, including just this endless deluge of competing superhero franchises, just became all that you saw in theaters. It was like those and a, a handful of animated children's films and then almost nothing else would ever make it into theaters. And the stuff that did make it into theaters that wasn't those things would just get quickly replaced by more of those things like they you could look at the show times for any movie and like anything that wasn't that stuff would be replaced quicker. And the stuff that was that was those things would stick around for longer and longer and in many cases like this is like a demand thing like it's the audience's fault in some cases that they keep specifically pouring all their money into this thing no and it's disney's fault 
It's yeah. Disney's well, it's, it's Disney is Disney is in its complete continued monopolization and so on. But that's also like another thing that's being sort of enabled by people giving them disproportionate amounts of money all the time too. like there's a there's a back and forth here to some extent. And so to some extent, well, like thing- it's, it's often that people just don't look any deeper into these medias. So they just they they that's that's like the, that's the total of what they consume in many cases it's just but, like this is the big popular thing and that's all i hear about and i won't really try to look for other stuff and so they just consume the popular thing so it kind of has a feedback loop of until that becomes all that consider, there is you have to consider that disney knows that in advance they yeah. they they make they rely on the people you know it's that feeling of you you rewatching a tv series that you've watched five times already instead of looking for something new just yeah. because it's comfort food, basically. And they Disney preys on that sort of feeling. And they know that people go to the cinema and they don't really know what they were going to watch. And they oh, there's a new this franchise that I already sort of know out. Which is, for me, it's completely baffling. Because if I, I, personally, if I go to the theater, I'm like, I'm going to watch something new. I'm going to be engaged. I don't want to be... Oh, yeah. Like, even food. when people find out a Star Wars movie is bad, they'll still watch it over a movie that sounds like it's supposed to be good. Yeah, yeah. Because Star Wars, the, the, I, 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 I'm not saying this as as judge. I'm not trying to judge the, the people that do that. It's totally fine if you want comfort, because you know you do your, you, yeah, your own it's, time it's just it's want. just part of why this has become what Disney we have. Because 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 video games are the same way though, where it's like people oh, just yeah, yeah, yeah. for years just fucking obsessing over cyberpunk, for example, and they just will <laughs> not stop hyping it infinitely or like yeah like the, the fact that like sony is eternally rewarded for amalgaming all their games into the same fucking similar thing because like, like this formula sells and it's because it's like yeah because people keep buying that because they're afraid of or new Call and of different Duty, things and they evade or electronic it cards anything yeah. that looks different they're like yeah gross some some indie some indie bullshit like it's it's really informative <laughs> to look to what to like subscribe to like like the sony like play the, the the PlayStation YouTube account where they'll post like the thumbnail they'll post like the trailers that they that they use on their storefront like kind of like Steam like they have video trailers mm-hmm. and they're and they're like hosted on their YouTube account and it's like seeing the how like your average console owner type audience member reacts to like anything that's outside of the norm often like just derisively or act- actively hostile and it's often like really interesting indie games and it's like anything that sticks out is just bad they don't they don't seek new experiences they reject them and that's part of why we get the way we are and it's been and it's been rough because yeah i look at these comments on my like mdk playthrough and they're informative and i would say that they're not they're not those kinds of comments it's just like people being like just kind of seeing what we missed here like uh, like like there's somebody that laments the fact that like you have the power and tech to make anything these days without compromise and you don't have to you, you don't even have to like improvise the thing. You don't have to. You don't have to like compromise any of the shit. You can just you can just go. You can make MDK, but incredible. But instead, people are chasing the fucking realism specter forever. And like they're like yeah. like AAA games almost refuse to make anything like MDK these days. And then like another comments like every darn every darn time I play an FPS, I think why is there always a level where you jump on mirrors and then luge? <laughs> and now I finally know. And it's like oh, it's an ironic <laughs> comment because this is not a thing in video games because i because literally part two of my playthrough i'm already in a level where it's like there's a beautiful sky box at least for the time like it's well it's beautiful it's just like it's it's pixely and shit and the entire level in some cases every floor and platform is a mirror that just reflects the sky box again and so the you 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 only tell where you are via the contrast between the two but the whole thing is just so striking and beautiful and original and bizarre looking and then yeah you lose <laughs> like you're fucking like sliding down these tunnels and just like this is such an insane thing where like the like a, a lot of the time the verbs are really familiar you jump you glide you shoot you snipe but then you do weird things like like snowboard and luge and and things like that and while and the levels are doing this fucking bizarre shit and it's like why not any, also, why you- not why not ever do things like this anymore also, when you turn the, the the, I think the camera itself is interesting because when you turn it, the, the screen all tilts, and it adds this little really, it, I it feels to me I I'm not playing it obviously, but it feels to me like it, it just adds this really interactive feel to the moving of the camera, just because it's 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 the whole world is tilting. It's like almost driving a car, except it's not. It's a game that pulls uh, off so many strange things. Like the protagonist is two D, 
but he reacts to every part of the, the gameplay like he should, including like having different poses for all these different actions, like losing and stuff. But also like he'll like mantle onto ledges, believably, mm -hmm. despite that not even a, existing I, in the I same dimension that, as the three D character, the three D ledge. When I saw that for the first time, I was like, "Wow, that is impressive." Yeah, this is a it's it's a hell of a trip. And then there's a, there's neat elements like how when you snipe, you have what I what seems to be the most extreme possible zoom of any game i've ever seen i don't <laughs> think you can zoom that far with a sniper in sniper elite games like it's such a ridiculous sci-fi sniper rifle and the and be, and and they were pulling off good enough such good draw distances even at that time with the graphics they had that you can just infinitely zoom across incredible expanses until you're like zooming oh, you like a like a hundred times deep I think you it literally caps out at, at a times isn't... 100 zoom. It's not draw distance, though, Keith. They don't do it with draw distance. What they do when you zoom in, they, they actively physically move the camera towards wherever you're aiming. It's not yeah. like draw... <laughs> it's a trick, <laughs> so yeah. Basically, it's but a just, trick, yeah. But I just mean, the fact that they can seamlessly do that, and there's no... And it's, like they're pulling that off yeah, back yeah. then, and it's great. And they're doing it multiple times at a time, because not only do you zoom in, <laughs> but every time, you, every time you fire a gun, uh, uh, your sniper rifle, <laughs> there are, there's a split screen on the top of the screen where three separate cameras will follow the trajectory of your bullets three at a time. So if you fire mm -hmm. a bullet, you get like a like a it's like the movie Wanted, where the fucking camera follows your bullet all the way to its destination, including it blinking out into the skybox, and you, and it does that for three separate bullets at a time, in addition to showing your actual perspective in the in the middle of the screen. And it's like there's just so much nuts, so shit happening, and it's like a 1997 PC game that's like a fucking evolutionary dead end of video games. And every time I see that, I'm just kind of sad when like I see interesting shit from the 90s and 2000s that we just decided not to ever follow up on again do you do you have you ever played the first half-life i i played it for like half like a, i don't know what half a session means i played it i played it for like one session like once for a bit mm -hmm. so I, I saw like so the opening know. bad happening the, what and i'm like saying jumped is around a bit what i'm and thinking I was like, is this that is this... very old this uh, yeah, <laughs> what I'm thinking is that this phenomenon that made uh, MDK sort of disappear and MDK like games, the cinematic games, is, is very is very common. And for ex uh, an example of that is Half Life One and comparing it to Half Life Two. I mean, they're both good games. I I prefer Half Life One, but the ending in the end of Fallout in the oh, sorry not Fallout in the ending of Fall of uh, Half Life One. You literally go to an alien planet where the gravity is different and there's like bumpers where you jump up in like in a sonic and level. And it's hated and by most have... people, I believe. Yes, it is really difficult. That level is way too difficult for what it is. But I, I feel that if it were a little bit easier, people wouldn't hate it. Uh, and well, you have an alien gun. Goes. And, like and when, when, there's like dogs I play a, Like whenever you. I play a really, really, really bad game that's really frustrating... I'm out, my usual my usual takeaway is like if it's gonna be this bad, like the least they could do is just make the game easier because then it would yeah. be then it would be le like anything that's just easier is less hated because at least you don't have to like suffer the whole time. <laughs> you could just Absol get yeah. through the stupid game and be like, all right, well I, that was bad, but I personally never I beat Half Life One I didn't want to because die. the last level is so difficult. But the thing is, it's so out there, and even but the thing is, the Half Life. One also has the... Spe Remember the spitting dogs? I don't know if you've ever seen them, if you've not played too no. much. They have these little dogs that are like Vorti uh, Vortigaunts, but dogs, and they spit at you some acid, and they're like a major part of the gameplay. A lot of levels revolve around you dealing with them. They don't appear in Half-Life 2. And, hmm. and Half-Life 2 just always felt to me... First off, it's weird because it's like... It starts in med in Meteor Res, it, like the, the it feels like Half Life Three instead of Half Life Two. There's a lot of stuff that happened in between the two games that doesn't get told, um, and so it's always weird. But it's Half Life Two always felt like told now though. <laughs> oh yeah, that's yeah. Uh, it's got a but prequel, it always feels like <laughs> finally real. It, it feels like just oh let's make Half Life again, but this time realistic and serious because the first one isn't serious at all ever. The scientists are goofy, and, the, and, and, and they're all dying and the, comically, and it's the same yeah. like three scientists repeating over and over again. And they play on it as well, and oh my god, it's... But it's also like, 
not just it's goofy, but it's also a serious game in the in the in the gaming industry. It it innovated with its intro and it innovated with the the technology. Do you itself. have opinions about whether someone should play Half Life One or Black Mesa? That's... I I feel Black Mesa well, is a have... better. Is That'll it? be a yeah. choice I have to make at some point. Because it's the same. Do I thing, play the authentic but... original game or do I play like the fan remake? Was was why? Sorry, what was the? Hey, yeah, the Half Black Mesa is just a remake. I, it's basically the I same didn't... game except gra- I... better graphics. Yeah, I didn't think that Half Life One was a relatively bad game. I mean, it has no, some, it was okay. It has some like, okay, this is an old video game stuff to it, mm-hmm. but nothing like, me- nothing like where you mechanically go like, all right, fuck this game. Like there has no, no, to be it's a, a modern version. shooter. Even no, though, yeah. like, I'm just, I'm just talking about it, how I have the question of where I have, to, I have to choose one or the other eventually. Because I'm, I'm, I'm it, not going to so, fucking play yeah, both. That's silly. It, it depends on yeah. depends on what you care about. If you want the game to, if you want. The, most likely just play Black Mesa because it's uh, it's modern, so I, it's pro- it's going to run yeah. without any issue, and it's going to yeah. look a little bit nicer, and you don't have to it run the really risk good. of... I, yeah, I think, I, I, think good, I just anticipate but... the frustration of what will happen no matter what, which is that whichever one I pick is wrong. <laughs> the comments <laughs> will just all be telling me yeah. that you should be playing the original game if you've never played it. You should be playing some, having your experience colored by a fan remake. And then if I play the original game, they're like, you know, there's a fucking, you know, there's a fucking HD good version now, right? You can play the fucking beautiful, <laughs> well liked game that came out this year. Why are you playing this trash from 1997? It's like no matter what, <laughs> I'll be told I'm wrong. If it's you like, the, it's oh, like how every course. time I talk about playing Thief, I get a different opinion about what difficulty I should play it on, and I'm just like. Ugh. Oh, I can help you in that Fuck. because I finished Thief One recently. Yeah, but it's just, but, but like it's they're mutually exclusive unless I want to be a crazy person and play the game twice, or even in case play of Thief, or even play every level twice. Like, because at one point, one of the solutions in my head was like, I'll play every level on on normal mode and then our hard mode every time I no, forget, that's, every time. That's not good. <clears throat> but like so the, basically, only, the only thing, the only game I think I'd ever do that on is. Uh, I think I'll make myself play every level three times if I ever get around to covering Hitman. Mm. because the whole point is having different solutions for each level and the the sheer like possibility space of each level the alternative just was make... to play every hitman level twice but with a co-host and they we when we commit to always never killing the the enemy the same way and we take turns just make different let's plays just let's play instead of you know different let's plays i suppose that's a but that's no, well i'd want to do the same do level it. multiple times in a row uh, oh, I see. Because it, it's, it's easier cause it's in well. your head. Because, like in the thief yeah. case, it's like I'd explore it on normal and get the story, and also know the layout of the world at yeah. least the first version, and then I would play the hard objectives for it to get the full experience after I've like scouted it essentially. And in Hitman, it's like you, you the best way to iterate on your previous run of the level is to have just played the level <laughs> and not like play the whole campaign, then start over again, and so on. The thief, I find it interesting that you're. I I saw your comment about it. I I don't remember what video it was about Thief. I think the MDK uh, video. Uh, yeah. Oh, right. Exactly. Um, but it, it's easy. Just go for the hardest difficulty. It's not a very difficult game. You're going to have a good time. Yeah. It's a really good game well, there's, as well. There's like, three different pieces of advice. A lot of people say oh, to play normal your first time. Some people say the hardest difficulty. Other people say play the second hardest difficulty because it's too restrictive because you get because on the second hardest difficulty you have most of the objectives so you're kind of getting the full experience but you don't have to deal with the fact that the hardest difficulty makes you play as a pacifist for the entire game therefore making most of the tools pointless and useless oh. so yeah, there's so many schools of thought and no matter what I pick I'm wrong and the pressure makes, and want... the pressure there makes me constantly not just just it, it I'll does be like depend. next game in my mind I'm like the next game is thief and I've done that like three times and then I pick something it else when it's time to play the want. next game. That's true. I would never want to play Thief as not a pacifist. Of course, I'm gonna give them the blackjack to the back of the head. Yeah, but then the game at the, at the same time, the game's full of so many different tools, and like just you never use them using them feels like that is one thing. No, no, yeah, but yeah, like, but, like but like having your options reduced is can be a real bu- real bummer. The thing is, it also depends. I think for me, the biggest it, since we're talking about Thief. The biggest question is how willing are you to be capable of reloading every once in a while because you screwed up? Because the game can get a little bit hard on some of if you get yourself into trouble. I mean, I think um, the missions are probably like an hour or two long, and I'm not planning on like starting the whole mission over every time I get I. Uh, no, but I you fuck can up. quick save. You yeah, can quick save. That's what I mean. Like yeah. I, I've, I've, I've definitely would be quick saving. So I, I, yeah, I, I, I try not to save scum choices. 
I only try to I only save scum choices if I feel like the game straight up lied to me, not about the consequences of the choice, but what the choice even was. Yeah. I like the I game. I like I, games surprising I me with unforeseen consequences to my choices. But when a game just lies to me about what I'm doing, then I'm like, okay, come on. You literally wrote it wrong. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the, but the, but the game isn't Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, but the game isn't very deep in that aspect. The story is mostly told in the middle of missions, in between missions, rather. Yeah, no, and I'm not there's... concerned about that. I, yeah. I, for me, it would just be like it'd be the back and forth of like uh, there's a cha- there's a there's a go loud or a chaos period when you get caught in a stealth game, and so mm-hmm. I would be I would be quick saving periodically, like I always do in those kinds of games, just to cut back on my having to go back if i fuck up sort of situation kind of like in half-life alex but mm-hmm. whenever something goes wrong i would still try to resolve it if i could oh, without loading that's a good example like I, thought, I would yeah, try to like just... recover from the situation if possible because there's a story that comes from that from that like i would get i yeah. got very frustrated in some past co-op playthroughs i've done with people where the moment something went slightly wrong, they would just instantly load without asking the other players if they wanted to load. And it's like, no, like, let's see how that scenario plays out. Like, let's like, that's, that's, that's like, that's and some like, games, that's like the funny games D&D. are even better. Yeah, yeah. Some games are even better for that sort of play where you see how it's going to turn out because yeah. some games are designed with that in mind. Uh, Thief is not really, you do get a game over screen if you kill anybody on maximum difficulty. Like when I'm trying to do and my big, my big uh, fucking solo heist as my orc hunter that that left the party behind, and I'm and I found I find this giant treasure hoard, but there's a giant scorpion on top of it, and I'm trying to stealth in <laughs> and stealth out, and then right at the last second and the last moment, I fail my final stealth check on my way out with the treasure, and it catches me in its claw. Like I don't fucking quick load. We play the scenario. <laughs> What's going to happen here? Let's see what happens. Maybe I'll get slowly crushed to death down to the last particle of health and the fucking scorpion will critically fail its grapple check and drop me. And because it's so big, it can't reach further into the room and it can't actually pick me back up. So I'm just on the ground now and I'm alive. <laughs> like, it's like, and yeah. like, like the tool set of like a, a Dishonored or a Prey and, and, st- and those of the games are inspired by Thief. Like, Seeing how the systems in, a, in an immersive sim, seeing how those systems play out is worth seeing through whenever you fuck up. But also, mm-hmm. you know, quick save periodically so that once you do fuck up and fail, you at least don't have to replay the last hour. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the thing, the good thing about it is that uh, there are some missions that if you if you look at the objectives, because basically the way the game works is when you t- you start a mission, it has a list of objectives. And the objectives get added or extra difficult depending on the difficulty level that you choose. So if you look at the objectives, I'm like, eh, I don't really care about collecting all the money. I'm just going to play on normal instead of hard or whatever. Because there's there's at least one mission where the only difference is the amount of money you collect. And if you don't care about that, if you don't yeah. want that as a... yeah, you just Although that, yeah. Although that itself is like encouraging you to fully explore the area and but so on. But you can on. still fully explore. It just doesn't hang mm-hmm. over your head as a fail state. Yeah. Shit's complicated. That's the that's the argument for normal is that you can still do everything even on normal. It just don't doesn't require you to do it. But I find anyway. I, I increasingly find that running a let's play channel is like an endless series of like opportunity cost <laughs> choices essentially. Yeah, yeah. It's like okay, like if I make this choice, then I, that means I don't do any of those other choices, and like that's just what this playthrough is. Like the choice to carry Vincent throughout the whole of Half Life Alex. Like this is now a Vincent playthrough, so that. You've lost the chance that for this ever to be a non-Vincent playthrough, and there's different <laughs> variations of that. And then people will be like, "Are you gonna are you gonna replay this game or re- or redo that game?" Because they're like, uh, "You should replay Kotor, but the other side of the story." Or you should uh, near replicant HD whatever is coming out. You played near Gestalt before. It was like a tweet that came out today at me, and I'm like, "No, I'm not gonna replay. I'm not gonna play the HD remake of the Japanese version of the game that I already played. Like it's just not." The opportunity cost is not <laughs> worth it. Like, if you have infinite time, I'm like, yeah, sure, that seems kind of fun. But, like, I don't have infinite time. Every single playthrough I choose technically comes at the cost of all the other playthroughs I could have chosen. And so, like, there's such a specificity to, like, why, I, like, what deserves being replayed. And there has to be, like, a reason for replaying a game or spending or doing, like, multiple styles of game and so on. And, like, it's like I, I can see a special case for hitman for example or 
like a game like Dark Souls with all its different playthrough styles and how important it is to to me and the channel and everything and and that how how specific and, and monumental that is. But then like something like Thief, it's like, yeah, I could play Thief twice or I could play Thief two. You, do you want to play through a Thief <laughs> two? Got to think oh, about that Thief real hard, so guys. Difficult. <laughs> it's such a difficult game though, but you should. It's it's fun yeah. sometimes. I it's play every game one. all the time, constantly. I've never stopped <laughs> playing video games. I do that sleep. almost, sleep for a week. in a way, I do that almost more than anyone. <laughs> and yet, still unobtainable as a goal. <laughs> I feel it's like Avatar I'm evidence, all over again. I feel like yeah, I'm evidence towards the idea that if you try to fully embrace the idea of playing absolutely everything, it's like it's, you just, re, all, the more you play, the more you just get into the culture and understanding of how many games there even are. And the more you understand how impossible that idea as a, is as a concept. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's the that's the, the limitless time problem. Uh, is that there are there are always going to be more games, and there are time in the world to play them. And, and so people must, not even this, time to play them. Given this infinite variety, they pick the most boring ones. <laughs> yeah, like and then <laughs> and then uh, they're like, "Ghost of Tsushima is a fucking revelation! What an incredible video game!" It's like I Neo two. Play it. My sweet summer child. There's so much video game out there. Please. Well, I mean, this goes this goes back to the whole. Uh, well, I guess not that exactly, but this goes back to like how journalism for games works and how there's there's not really good, uh, not really like good incentive to to talk badly about big games because. Oh, you actually, up, you, you just get harassed for it. <laughs> Yeah, you get harassed for you get it. By dac- people you who... get doxxed and death threatened for criticizing yeah, like, a game mildly because of the sheer scale of its fandom. Even though it's not out exactly. yet, it has a fandom already. And it's like, people are fucking exhausting. Yeah, saying, I was a, gonna game, say... saying a game is like 5 out of 10. People are like, how fucking dare you? You're, you're like, you're, you know, trying. you got it out for the game. You just don't like it because you're something, something. It's like, what? No, man, games can be boring as shit. Trust me, I play a lot of them all the time. There's plenty of boring games. Like, I was going to... Uh, sorry. No, no, go for it. When you said how games journalism works, obviously there's still a lot of games journalism being done and good games journalism, but I was going to say, does it work? Because kind of YouTube and Twitch kind of broke a lot of the, the some what, what a lot of people had need for game journalism. It kind of broke that. It's the finding you can games. just go that's look at a thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that was like, that's what we but talked about now with the, the idea of the, like fair use is like, well, at some point, like people how else do people get an informed decision about a game that they're going to invest 60 fucking dollars in if not seeing someone else play it and like but the thing is the the what the hate that you were talking about just now about the games journalists that say bad things about the about the games it also applies to us when we play games and say oh this this storyline is dumb or yeah, the no, gameplay is not uh, good we we run into that constantly about people who get upset that we don't enjoy a game that they enjoy or oh my God. the unironic fucking internet outrage when donkey made a video about like kingdom hearts 3 or something and like some or like a few times now he like he like, doesn't love a jrpg and like people are so mad about like a five minute comedy review of a game that they like that they just go on about it not only for like just days on end on Twitter and so on, but then they keep bringing it up in other videos, constantly just raging at him. Like they just can't stop burning a torch to the point where they <laughs> spend more time being mad at him than he spent making the review. And it's like, I don't, I don't know how people tick any, like what, how they work. I, their, their behaviors are so fucking confusing at this point. I, it seems exhausting. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm constantly disappointed uh, at all times by stuff. I just ban them. <laughs> Every well, time that, I see this pattern, helps. I'm like, oh, goodbye. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm experiencing that a lot with like Honey Pop 2 currently, which is Oof. not been a fun experience. Didn't expect that to be a fucking incendiary game, did you? Didn't think you'd be no, pissing off the no, Honey Pop I, fandom. <laughs> I. I didn't go into playing Honey Pop 2 with any... I went in with the utmost, like, all right, it's a dumb game. I'm going to have fun with a dumb game. You know, like, oh, I can expect, you know, really bare bones writing, but a, a pretty acceptable uh, match three game. And it's like, ah, 
It's none of this. It's everything I, I didn't want in a video game turned into a, a video game. Awesome, thanks. I'm glad I'm here now. And people are just not happy that I don't. It's like, well, if you're not having fun, don't play it. It's like, I'm going to fucking play the game that I bought. And I'm going to beat the I always fucking hate, game I always that hate I that comment it's because like, I'm like, fucking leave. Yeah, like, like dude. You have like, the people like are, you're you're gonna begrudge this playthrough and make it so and, and like if we, if you get your way, it's like nobody gets this content because you don't like it. But like, there's this hypocrisy to the idea of like if you're so mad about me consuming a thing I don't like, why are you still here? <laughs> like you have the power me, to end this playthrough at any moment by simply not looking at yeah. it anymore. <laughs> and they'll but they'll just keep <laughs> making just, the same comment. Let me just give a, a little bit of a counterpart, a counterpoint to that, because sometimes the comments are also good. And uh, shout out to Supersonic Tumbleweed for saying the best comment that <laughs> I've seen in a while. <laughs> I, I posted it in chat uh, in our Discord for you guys to see. Uh, I've been ragging on Deus Ex Human Revolution for the last little bit because the game is ramping up its storyline and it's it's dumb a lot. And uh, it's got interesting themes, but it it, it's, it does so many things wrong. Oh yeah, um, that, that's always the counterpoint is that there's always somebody who loves that and it, yeah. th you're making Super it for them. Being like, it's, it's the other people's fault like, for sticking yeah. around and hating it. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, but there's definitely not an incentive from... The, that's the, the thing you always need to think about. It's is like, that our, YouTubers... like our Sonic and Zero Skate playthroughs. Like, yeah, those have yeah, an audience. Yeah. They are hungry for more. <laughs> They're, they're uh, not, it's, it's not the, the fans. They're not making just, that for fans. It's just fans all the dumb Sonic. assholes that hate <laughs> yeah. the videos but won't go away for some reason. Yeah. It's I, yeah, but the, the, the there's no there's no search engine optimization for let's play a game that I hate, basically. <laughs> yeah. Because <No, laughs> that's I, the, I, the sorry. No, go for it. Yeah, because I was just gonna say that it's at the end of the day that's what some people might hang on to is they might not like the game too much, but. If 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 you if your uh, criticism is interesting and if the, the points you raise are interesting, and if at the end of the day you're still having a good time, a good enough time anyway, then then it's it's good YouTube because that's you know you you don't watch YouTube to play a game, you watch it to watch YouTube. So and I think that's so, often kind of the role that we have when we make this kind of content is that we're the counterpoint to that idea that I brought up earlier that people just play games in zombie mode. And it's like not a thing I can just generalize about everybody, but there's a lot of people that just don't pay that much attention and they're kind of multitasking and they're kind of just burning through their afternoon after work or whatever. And they're not really engaging with the game that hard. Kind of like the way that like you can walk in on like your fucking like your parents just like just the TV is just on and they're like half paying <laughs> attention to it. And like they don't even they barely know what they're watching. It's like reality show something and it just kind of goes and then. They'll leave the room and come back at any, at any interval, and it doesn't really matter what they missed, and so on. Like that, that, that's that game. That's that's often an approach to gaming. <clears throat> so when we make a playthrough of like Zero Escape, and we're actively engaging with the game the entire time, and we're obsessing over each element of the story, and 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 theorizing about what's going to happen next along the way throughout the entire experience, and actually breaking down each thing. And sure, we'll be wrong, and we'll miss things, and so on, because we're still people. And it's not like a it's not a, like a review where we researched the game and played it five times through and then carefully checked all of our work or anything like it's us playing it in, on the fly, but like we're engaging with it very actively. And a lot of people aren't ready for that because they themselves, they're like, Oh yeah, I like the game, but they didn't really like think about it very much along the way. And they didn't really like give it their full attention. And it, but, we kind of, but because that's how they encounter and interact with a lot of games that then like that, they still came up with this idea that it was a, a good experience, even though they were half engaging with it. Hell, half of them, because there's so many people fucking admit they're watching our content while playing other games. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> not unless it's not unless it's like World of Warcraft or something. You should not be like multitasking while playing a video game. Uh, and it's like, I, so they'll be blindsided by these things. And some people act uh, react to it in a hostile way. Like, how ah, you just hate games and you're just when, when coming to hate this and blah, 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 blah. But then other people are like, oh my god, I didn't realize any of these things when I played through the game. And it's like you're opening their eyes to all these different observations and angles and what things mean or catching on these details that they weren't catching. To the point where, like, oftentimes people are like, you, you, this isn't a blind playthrough. You you looked up the, what happened or you knew what happened already because you keep predicting things. I, I'm predicting things because I'm fucking paying attention and you weren't because you were fucking eating Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> you were Jesus eating Christ. Cheetos. And somebody was... And, <laughs> Like you were talking on the oh. phone with somebody and eating chips while also playing the game, and then there's a fucking music playing in the background that wasn't from the game, and then you're like, "Oh, I missed the part." 
but there are games I, that are like they do it on purpose for you if, if you are what if like if you're paying attention like i keep going back to stuff that i'm playing at the moment prey does that so often like you you get introduced to a little idea or a little theory something that doesn't add up you think a little bit about it you come to maybe it's this and like five minutes later or ten minutes later then it is or it isn't da-da, whatever da-da. but da-da. it's like it's the timing and the, the pace that's why pacing is so important because you can't be left with a presumption or with maybe it's going to be this for hours and hours and then just aha it was you know, like it, it's, uh, pacing is very important in games and you completely miss you can throw it completely out the window if you're not paying attention because you know you're just not paying attention there's no the the setup and, and payback uh, sorry andrew you were gonna say no people i i think just yeah like what Keith said i think people don't a lot of people don't like to be overly critical or they like to give too many leniencies to games um like i really hate the argument for games where it's like oh if you're if you're struggling so much, why don't you just have a wiki open it's like n- no no <laughs> i'm not gonna do, i'm not gonna do that that's not if the, yeah. if the game needs a wiki to be open to play it the game there's sucks. so there's so many like, people that like extensively pre-research every game they play so they yeah, never get a blind like, playthrough because like they like, dude they i literally just I like look to. up hades builds and stuff like that <laughs> Oh, yeah, no. I, yeah. Like I went into Hades completely blind. I had no idea. I was picking dumb shit for like the first half of the game, and yeah. the moment you know, and then I started figuring out how stuff works. And then you start like building a a a, a build. You like, oh, yeah. I know these are the these are the good moves to have. These are the and now I just I don't have I don't have any shoes unless just, I put just myself the, into a situation. The number like, of depressing threads you can find of people just spoiling themselves about Outer Worlds. <laughs> <laughs> when that is, i mean out, sorry outer wilds outer wilds when that's like <laughs> yes, I, uh, the discovery <laughs> process is all the game is <laughs> like oh no because like yeah. you could just beat the entire game in 20 minutes from your first file if you know everything already but like but it's, it's like, so good to you, discover you're literally that's not supposed game. to look up anything about it ah. that's the one game where you can't even say what it is about without spoiling it you can't really explain any of the worlds in it because <laughs> all of or, them how every world works is itself a discovery process and that's the core progression of the game you don't level up anything but your or, mind <laughs> outer, yeah, outer yeah. or even like the basic uh, premise of the game you can't even explain the point sure, of the game sure you can the point of the game don't is you're you're on you're exploring space enjoy I went to outer but, wilds not even knowing about the core loop yeah that's what i'm saying that's what you can't say if you know which that te- which which frustratingly actually that is spoiled on the store page yeah but I'm like, Aww. I didn't even know that. Like, I just jumped in because it looked cool. I didn't cool. know that either. I was lucky. And I was, I, I, I was actually yeah. annoyed to find that you're supposed to know about that, basically. It's like, it's the it's the bullet point thing that everyone introduces the game as being, and they explain it as that. And I'm like, no, don't say oh, that. Oh, I liked finding that by myself. I was very surprised when that happened. I was yeah. like, yeah. wait, what? No, I what mean, is that's, this? <laughs> that's the thing. It's like, I, I, and so I don't, I, I hate that crap. I hate I hate the I hate the feeling where I'm like I don't really like this game and people's counter arguments are like yeah but you're just approaching the game wrong I'm like am I am I actually mm-hmm. approaching the game wrong or do I have like is my expectations <clears throat> too high for this game like is it weird of me to expect that a game uses its own can use its own systems uh like its own UI its own tutorial system to like properly explain shit to me or am I dumb for not going on Wikipedia and looking up how the fuck this goddamn game works like you know like uh it's i don't know and that that frustrates me and there are annoyingly some games designed for you to just look them up yeah like a a, a lot of uh, multiplayer like open world survival games are unplayable in a vacuum yeah and so don't starve or minecraft and so in those instances like minecraft i my stance and again it doesn't have to be consensus but my stance is that's a shitty game I don't I don't want to have a book open to play your fucking game. I'm not going to I don't I'm not going to do that. That's why I'm playing a game. Especially because a non game, a, a non-official book. Yeah, <laughs> like I yeah, like, like if it, it's an old school video game where you just kind of have to use the manual to to so, fill in the gaps so here and there, that's is, different than like use the public wiki because we didn't make our game playable. At least Minecraft <laughs> is slightly better about it now. Like you can open up a crafting book and it will show you how to make the stuff. Like, oh, you you want to make a, a desk? Here's the recipe to make a desk. Like, you don't have to, you don't have to like go on make Wikipedia anymore. That, yeah, well, you know what I mean. Like, you make a table or whatever. Uh, oh, like, okay. if you want to make a, a a a roof or a brick slant, like you can go into the you go into the crafting menu and you can scroll through the things you want to make or you can make. 
and then pick the thing and it tells you what you need for that that's nice that's what that should be in the game that should always have been in the game like why would i need to go somewhere else to find that now i don't know what they do that's frustrating but you know that's also part of the exploration part whatever i don't i don't know what this fucking weird eye i have does i guess i'll have to figure that out at some point but uh but like or but then you look at the inverse like binding of isaac and you're like all right what the fuck is this item it's like oh wouldn't you like to know I'm like yes literally <laughs> i would like to know what the fuck is this item it's like well pick it up okay i picked it up what's the fucking item can you tell me what the item is it's like you got a boy and i'm like what what does it fucking mean? Tell me what the fuck the item is in the game I already picked up. It's it's like, I can't make a decision to get rid of it now. Tell me what I just picked up. And it's like, oh, you'll, oh, you'll just figure it out. It's you fucking know, it's like, infuriating that Binding no, of Isaac just man. doesn't tell you what the mechanics are, even after you've picked something up. You're like, what yeah, is it doing, though? Like, what does it fucking do? I remember, like, the, playing, just, I remember playing Don't Starve, and I picked the librarian, and I was constantly slowly going insane, and I had no idea how to fix that, and I was just, like, go, just trying to mash all the systems. Like, what, what is... How does sanity work? How do you improve it? How do I fix the fact that I'm going to be dead soon? Yeah. And, I, and it was just, like, an infinitely looping, like, fuck you. And it's like, you could try. What was it? <laughs> I don't remember what... It, I don't know. I what, gave up, because the game wasn't fun. I went to Invisible Ink, the game by the same company that knows how to communicate its mechanics at you. Yeah, the visible ink's incredible. That's, that's the thing needs that like to have a book. I think that's the thing that baffled me about uh, Hades. But like you're playing Hades, you're like oh 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 my fucking god, you can do this? You're allowed to just have a clear and concise understanding of the mechanics before you pick things? Oh my god, you can you can look at what everybody gives you in like this thing called a a UI. I've never even heard of that before. Does, does, <laughs> does Binding of Isaac guys know that? There's a UI thing you can make? That's crazy. That's... What the fuck? How did they come up with these genius ideas? It's so impressive. It's almost That's like... the redemption thing. It's almost like... Every time... So, sorry. Fucking been... It's like... Sorry, it's just... It's infuriating to see, yeah. like... Supergiant just takes a, a, a genre and goes, Oh, all of you have failed at this fundamentally. Let me fix that for you. And then just does it correctly. And you're like... God, God, guys, could you at least copy the fucking homework here? Because fuck, man, you guys are making garbage. <laughs> like, <just laughs> the something. thing is, every time somebody tries to gaslight you, when you talk about a game and you, you criticize it and p people co try to come up with all these excuses, whatever it is, I'm not talking about anyone in specific, but when you find something that works and something that a game that does it properly, you know, like... That, that I think that 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 feeling of oh this is how it's done it's so good when you find it even whatever it is because it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a perfect game like Hades it could be just a partially perfect game but you know you can pinpoint you know even either it's the level design or it's the shooting mechanics or the writing yeah. or whatever I mean there's that's the thing too is like there are some mechanics that work by exploration there are some you know like Binding of Isaac a good example of this is the the layout of the levels. The way that you figure out how to move around between uh, worlds and that you can't go like you, you can go back, but not after you've gone into the room the first time. That's a that's a mechanic that's good to learn by experience. You go into a room, it locks you off. You go, oh, fuck, I'm stuck here. And then you re and then once you finish the room, the doors open up and you go back to the room you went before and it's open. You don't you don't get locked out again because you've cleared it and you go oh, you can keep going around the room. A uh, gotcha. Like you don't need a tutorial for that. But when you pick up an item in a room and suddenly half your health is gone, you need to go like, sorry, what? What the fuck happened? What did that just do? <laughs> was that just a punishment? Did I get anything for that? Is, is there like, did, was, this, was this a bad choice? And the game's like, ah, you'll figure it out when you die. And it's like, <laughs> okay. Was it a bad choice? And, th and then you die and you go, so what did it do? And it goes, you'll figure it out next time you encounter it. I'm like, I'm going to fucking kill. What does it do? Just tell me what it does. Like Hades, when you die, uh, or when you succeed, it shows like when you, sorry, when Hades, when you pick an item, when you pick a thing, it tells you exactly what it does, the numbers that it does and all that stuff. When you, while you're playing at any point, you can stop the game and you can look at all the things you have and figure out all the stuff that it does. And, when you win, you can go through and interrogate every single upgrade that you have and see exactly what it was doing and helping you. And it's like, these are important, valuable data sets that you can use to better your runs, which is the whole fucking premise for wanting to keep playing a roguelike. Like, the whole point is that you want to keep doing it so you get better and better. 
And so you need to figure out like what didn't work and why. Like if you get a stupid shitty fucking ability that does rupture, but it doesn't mean anything because there's no walls to push a boss into, then you look like a clown running into an enemy and hoping that they're going to bump into a wall and they never do. And you're like, well, this fucking didn't work. And now you know next time, like, don't bother with that. Unless you're going to go, like, fill out the entire Seder room because there's fucking walls everywhere. And now you can just yeah. ping pong people of fucking death. Like, there's value. Although, and you can although say, that's, just, that's just knockback and, and wall slam damage. But rupture actually applies to anything that would do knockback, even if it doesn't. Oh, yeah, sorry. That's that's right. I, I meant the knockback. That's the only uh, actually, reason no, it's I viable. The, I wasn't talking about rupture. I was talking about the uh, the splash. I can't remember the name now. The, like, when they hit the wall, and then it does a a, a splash damage. Uh, um, that That's the one I was talking about. We're like, that's a really fucking strong-ass power when you're in the Seder room, but it's worthless anywhere else yeah. when there's not, like, comp like constantly walls you can bounce people for me, into. For me, the engagement... There's two things that engage like, me in a video game. So, like, one of them is specifically choices like the number of choices you have how interesting those choices are and how like val like how valid they are what the trade-offs are the risk reward and so on like being a being a person who is actively making choices based on at least some kind of information is one of the best things you can have so like that's why i love i loved playing the remake uh the the quote-unquote hd <laughs> remake of resident evil 1 which was which, which itself is 20 years old now uh but it was remade again, but not that not that remade. <laughs> it was just ported again. But uh, like that, like that that fucking original Resident Evil, where it's like, okay, here are the rooms where the safe rooms are. Here are enemies that are dangerous enough to be and inconsistent a little bit enough that there's like a gamble here of how of how well and engaging with them will do. Like how well will running past them work? How well will shooting them work? How much space do I need to shoot them? Uh, before they catch up with me or how much space do I need to evade around them? How much ammo should I have? You're making all these choices specifically built around the fucking perfect mechanic, which is save rooms. I love the save rooms in Resident Evil games because that's where you make your choices. You have a little bit of quiet time where the song plays. You're like, okay, this is a I've escaped momentarily from the from the horror game. I'm going to open this box up. Here's my items in the box. Here's the items on my character. And I need to choose how much do I want to carry? How much space do I want to leave open for stuff I'll discover along the way? I'll open my map and figure out the route of like, where do I want to go next, either to explore or to go back and solve a puzzle or reuse a key that I've found? And what items do I think I'll need along the way? And you're, there's so many choices being made there. And, and then and then once you're playing the game game, you're making snap choices along the way that are either a mixture of like your your plan and the improvisation you have to do along the way. And that's so fucking compelling. And then the other half of what makes games really interesting is usually uh, discovery. Just your your natural curiosity being satisfied by you wanting to explore and find things and figure things out. But there's like right ways and wrong ways to do that. So like in the, the Dark Souls way and the Resident Evil way of exploring is just fucking great. But it's it, for me, at least for me, and I know there's other people that like it, like the Binding of Isaac version of exploring where you just like, I don't know what it does. Maybe you'll know someday is like infuriating. It's like you're just just the, the constant obfuscation of information to the point where let's just fucking face it. Everyone cheats. All the Binding of Isaac players just cheat and look the stuff up. They don't intuitively pick it up by just playing naturally for hundreds of hours. Like they just they just cheat and look it up. Like, I don't know who this yeah. is for. What the, what the <laughs> fuck is this? Those entire wikis where you have to where the wiki has to be like a series of pictures and you click on the picture because that's all you know that the ability is, is the icon that shows up when you get it. And you click on that to get told what the thing is because you don't even have a. Yeah, I think if I remember correctly, you don't even have necessarily have like a name that you can easily type to like look up what it is half the time and it's just I like it's just know, the worst yeah i think i know what binding of isaac is for it's a joke on all the english speakers that didn't grow up <laughs> playing english games without knowing what they meant <laughs> i mean it's it's I'd, basically I'd, that i'd buy into that more if it wasn't made by edward mcmillan where it uh, just there's just no kidding. there's no personal experience to make to base that on I know, I know. I'm just kidding. It's a, that's what it's, there's it's games that do properly, though. Yeah, it's just a frustrating design choice. And like again, I get maybe that's something up somebody's alley. That's exactly what they want. But I, I don't think that that's fun. I don't think that that's good. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that. I'm not going to like. I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh wow, this is an innovative and an interesting experience. I'm going to say, no, this sucks. I hate this. 
this is a mm -hmm. shitty this is a shitty experience because this is a, that's that's how i feel about a game i'm not gonna like quietly sit there with my like mouth closed going mm, mm, mm hmm mm hmm mm hmm Mm. <laughs> like you know like that's, that's and that's what it feels like a lot of people want from you when you when you don't like a game but like just yeah. shut up and enjoy the game and you're like or there's there's or, like a dishonesty crazy, built into it because or, you... go watch someone the fuck else like there's plenty of other people <laughs> and it's like yeah no, but they're, I, not, they're not playing it like you do let me and it's push like, back on you that's why that's because they're not fucking critically thinking about the game they're just playing the game like let me push back <laughs> on you though i think it's important to learn like depends on the, what uh, you know how old you are as a, and where you are in life but i think it is important to learn how to deal with other people's differing opinions if you're watching a let's play and the let's player doesn't agree with you on something even if they think the complete opposite don't let that get up to your head don't go watch somebody else continue watching andrew complaining about uh, <laughs> honey pop 2 or whatever <laughs> and uh and then i mean just and then go on rule 34 or whatever it is to like, get the thing that he blurs out. Like people, people like Overwatch. Like they genuinely like, they enjoy the game. They have fun. They're wrong. They're just 100% <laughs> wrong. That, it's, that's not a humanly possible real thing unless you're lying to yourself. But Andrew, I accept, you don't play Lucio. I, I accept that people believe that. And I just go, all right, that's fine. If you, if you, you, if you truly Lucio. believe that, I'll let you, you believe that. Lucio. I'm that's not going to, I'm not going to like force you to understand the reality but like i don't have to live in that weird fake idealistic world that you live in i don't have to be sitting there with my eyes held open by like fucking metal wires going like oh i see why it's so fun yeah you could just <laughs> all the colors oh you need to just ignore Lucio. all of the frustration on like at this building up behind me like it's I, and that's I don't know that's the that's that's the thing that happened with Honey Pop where I'm like everything just keeps fundamentally failing me, like all of, all of it just keeps being such an abject failure and people are just like it's fine just get over it chill and it's like I, how do you chill when things just keep falling down in front of you it's like what there also it's, are it's two like other flavors of viewer because there's there's one type of viewer that like I had this experience with the game and I just want you to recreate that experience for me. Like they're like, wow, what an experience to see a game through new, uh, through fresh eyes. But like, while some part the of the people point. are like, wow, I can't wait to see how this turns out in your unique way. Other people are just like, by fresh eyes, I mean like, be me as a child, so I can see it again as a child. Like, make make my experience happen again the same way, is what <laughs> they want from you. And then there's other people that frankly should just be buying video games but instead of buying video games they're watching you and you you exist only yeah. as a conduit to be the game for them and they're mad every time you get in the way and those people could just immediately fuck up like if anyone ever like yeah. you talk too much I'm like banned <laughs> i'm just immediately like i'm done <laughs> literally immediately i'm like this is the premise of this like if they complain about me being on my own show then they're gone like and i don't mean like they have criticism i mean like they're literally like they're complaining about me being in the way of yeah, their absolutely. like. The, I'm not just a fucking like casket that serves them the game for them that they refuse to buy. I'm like, I'm not. No, fuck you. This is my channel. Then, it's me. Keith, I live here every day. Be yeah. honest. He, they don't say you talk too much. They say he talks too much. Yeah, they always. Yeah, they always talk about <laughs> me as if as if yeah. I'm not the number one person that sees their comment. The only uh, person, yeah. Because then one goes back and watches the. And they, yeah, they're, they're usually way meaner than that. <laughs> Which yes, is all, which all just earns the ban more because like people that like are mad the let's player is let's playing is like all right I'm sorry you don't it's like it's like watching someone not know how to use a screwdriver or not know what it's for and but they're here anyway like holding a screwdriver and they're just like banging <laughs> it against the wall like why not work right this is a bad walkthrough I'm like <laughs> okay <laughs> I get complaints every day about how my videos are bad walkthroughs and I'm like okay that's that's not what they are yeah yeah like oh and they I mean, didn't answer your question about the thing and they never it says let's play in the title I what, mean, what did you think I this mean, was I, I i give concessions at times where i understand that like you know okay sometimes it isn't fun to listen to me just keep complaining about the same thing as it continually kicks me in the shins every time i encounter it yeah but, but sometimes like, you're stuck in the middle of it and that's just all the game's yeah, giving you it's, it's just it's that's just all it has for you yeah that's all it has and so like my solution to honey pop is like i just don't play it sober I haven't played, <laughs> I just haven't played Honey Pop sober the entire, like, for, like, seven <laughs> episodes now. You and do sound a little bit affected, that's true. It, it's, 
it's so, it's infuriating i hate it i, I like the moment <laughs> i stop recording I'm like god what a fucking bad experience like it's just such an unfun you're literally time. just drinking to get through it because like the youtube algorithm demands you play more honey pop because it's, it's doing it's so really well popular, on your channel but like it's so bad it's just such a bad <laughs> game and there's no there's like no I, I can't be sober through it because like jesus christ the characters alone are just like could you could you just could you please fucking go somewhere else just go to a different fucking game please i'm just trying to have fun here and then and here's like, the thing at the end goes, of the day the people the, the the irritating people that are mad at you are they don't matter they just they no, just I, like they just don't matter like but, I, but I look, I look is, at your videos I, and your I'm videos not having fun yeah, making the content and that's the problem is like yeah i, no, I need sucks. to have fun to keep making this video and i can't i literally know it helps to be like, have my have i have fun playing bad games and complaining about them gene <laughs> but yeah, i just mean like, like the I, fact that your videos <laughs> all of your videos have thousands of views in a way that's like astronomically high for anything on your channel but also despite the fact that the overriding feeling about them is that people just keep complaining about your videos and stuff all of those videos have hundreds of likes and like zero to ten dislikes. I don't know who yeah. they are, but thank you. It's like but the, also the, the whiny people like, are non-representative, and they never are. They're just an irritating handful of people. And no matter what content you make, no matter what form it takes, no matter how hard you try to like appease everyone, there's always somebody complaining. And they'll, in, in many cases, on a daily basis, you hear a new complaint you've never heard before, and it's like a brand yeah. new thing. It's like the it's like the time I made the fucking Wasteland Two playthrough, and the guy was like t complaining how it's so fucking condescending that you would read this game to me and i'm like what <laughs> like he was he was offended yeah. i was reading the, was the dialogue voice that was no it's Isn't not voice acted ever youtube wasteland 2 is no YouTube it's not voice acted i'm just reading the dialogue and yeah, he was he was he was offended not just annoyed that it wasn't a silent playthrough because there are like silent <laughs> playthroughs of text heavy games where they just click every few seconds but like he was offended i was reading to him and you just you just eventually you just get so fucking t uh Burn, uh, you get so fucking disillusioned by the sheer number of stupid comments you get, you just realize it's just not. You just ignore it. None of these people Can matter. You imagine, like they ne they're never it, representative. Like, it's always someone's unique, like, stupid fucking complaint. Did you say that, that in is, school when the teacher's is, like reading a book and he's like, "Are you fucking condescending to me?" Just, like, just go up to your, your, your you go to high school. <laughs> like, don't you lecture me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that's sort of more or less what it happened you got to watch a youtube <laughs> let's play i mean i suppose the, the thing is like it's, it doesn't it doesn't make sense on any level but like if no it's i, I like used to see andrew playthroughs no of, ja of japanese games where he would <laughs> he would just like go to the dialogue and like every time dialogue came up he'd be like uh-huh click oh uh-huh right click Ch chota mate yeah click <laughs> like he wasn't reading any of it he was just looking yeah. at it reading in his head and pressing a and i was like what are you doing <laughs> that's why like i don't play any visual novels that aren't voiced because yeah. it's a lot of effort to like voice all of them yeah uh, like you, that guy would have been so happy with you that one you have one customer <laughs> Wow, for that content style. <laughs> and like and now i have the problem with honey pop where i'm i like i have to struggle to not skip the dialogue because i don't i don't want it to happen <laughs> and it's like, and I and like have to sit there like, I don't press Andrew. You could press the button and stop it, but don't do it. Don't press the button, Andrew. And like mm -hmm. every time, every episode, there's one time where I do it on accident because I, I, <laughs> I cannot stop myself. Someone's just, yes, yeah, someone's saying something. He's like, I can't believe, click. Oh, fuck. I'm mm -hmm. supposed to wait for the fucking God. Oh, sorry. All right. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I, cause it's, they're so aggravating. They're so unlikable. They're so un fucking great. To be around that it's like i i will do anything to get away from it and like it like i i i've gotten to the point now where i don't listen to them because if you give them anything like gifts or food or um or whatever they say like a little quip i don't do that anymore i just speed rush it all where i just mass like give them everything they're like here 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 and they just like the dialogue stacks on itself really because like oh that's all quip. folks <laughs> yeah and i'm just like all right we're done. <laughs> we don't we don't need to hear uh, we, we don't need to hear what they have to say because i uh, I assume they're appreciative of everything I've given them. Done. Let's move on now. And then, like, <laughs> you know, like the it's it's, but it's so, it's so frustrating. Uh, 
when you when that that's the game that takes off like t couldn't it be spiral i like spiral i'm having a great time with spiral <laughs> just like that you're would cursed take off. where your most popular games yeah. will always be like, uh furry always... and dating visual novels so i was like i don't i don't it, and it's fine i like some visual novels i just also the ones that get popular are the ones yeah. i don't like those aren't the ones i like <laughs> like stop liking this trash like why why what it what about like when I played Honey always Pop the trick. One, it it's was... like the, the, the popular comment from the audience is just play what you like, but also you won't watch it. <laughs> yeah, like that's the thing. It's like all the comments in Honey Pop are like, it's fine. You have enough charisma to carry the channel on your own. Just play games yeah. you like. No, I don't because I've been doing that and people don't watch them, sir. It's so common it's that my favorite playthrough on the channel at a given time is the least watched on the entire yes. thing. Yes. Like... My favorite playthrough on the channel is Banjo Kazooie because I had the most fucking <laughs> fun ever playing that game. And guess what? It's not nearly, even remotely close to as popular as one episode of Honey Pop is. And it's one like, episode, my God. Fuck me then. Like the whole series, the whole series entirely is not even close to being as popular as one episode of Honey Pop. It's like, <laughs> maybe, just, just maybe, guys, maybe. The problem is the bad games. Like, it's not me. It's the fact <laughs> that the bad games are the ones that keep making it being being the successful things on my channel. And it's not like... I'm not some kind of savant here. I'm not playing Honey Pop like some fucking 4D, 200% IQ chess master. I'm not like every match is a fucking intense, stressful game. It's like... Oh. Four. Three. <laughs> three. Four. Uh, if only they didn't fuck this part up. Four, <laughs> three, three. Oh shit! I might not make it. Four. Oh wait, I'll make it. Three. <laughs> like, like, it's it's a match three game. It's so fucking bare bones. And right, because you're like, basically just playing Puzzle Quest. Yes, and they try to <laughs> spice it up. They throw a little fucking salt guy spice on it, where it's like they got baggage, and it makes it a little bit harder. And I go. It's bejeweled right. with anime. Oh my god! Wait, what? Sorry, I'm watching yeah. your gameplay, and it's not even good bejeweled. No, you ch no. You straight like... up can cheat. You can move the tiles so far. It's not just a, you don't just switch neighbor neighbors with each other. What the fuck? No, no. You can move it all the way left and all the way up and down. Oh, you can my move god. it left and right as much and up and down as much for every tile. Uh, so it's 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 a it's a game that was already casual, but now it's for yes. babies. It's more casual. <laughs> like they had it, they somehow ultra casualized a game that was already casual. Well, now Honey Pop Two added some some hard modes to it, where they give you uh, stupid stipulations. Uh, so so Honey Pop isn't that yes, bare yes. What is that? There's there is a lot of stuff going on there. So the point is, you it's not just match three. Match each match three you make gives you points, and those points need to fill up a Plus meter at the bottom. Sexuality seed. Uh, sexuality. These terms. Um, yeah. The uh. Yeah, yeah. By the way, get what do sexuality seeds? <laughs> Fucking, the game doesn't explain them to you. Uh, you have to figure that out on your own. Well, unfortunately, um, we desperately need to stop because yeah, but ooh, i need i have yes, i have only a half an hour to cook and eat dinner before the stream so we're gonna close things off here if you want to ask us questions send them to dialogue choices podcast at gmail.com uh no one does and go watch <laughs> honey pop Instead, 2 on andrew's we'll channel talk to you about geography go watch andrew's spyro <laughs> playthrough and oh, like yeah. comment subscribe on it do all the interactions on it to boost us on the algorithm well, I'm having fun with it. It's, it's me. While, while neglecting to interact with this Honey Pop playthrough. It's so that being it fails. I can vouch, <laughs> it's, it's I can vouch for, I can vouch for uh, the Spiral playthrough being better than the Honey Pop one. Because I watched a little bit of each. <laughs> Andrew it's does possible. like games sometimes. It's just yeah. that whenever he does enjoy a game, nobody watches that playthrough. And that, that stands it for is... both his solo stuff and our co-op stuff. It's always oh, the, least popular an, <laughs> the least popular Andrew content is the stuff that he liked. <laughs> <laughs> it is important to point out that even though Andrew likes Spyro, he did spend the first two episodes complaining about the game. I did, but but not in a <laughs> but, it's fun. But, not it's in good. A, but not in an overly negative way. It was just like exactly. these are things was, that are not good about this game. But it that's was okay. Fun. Like it was fun. You learn mistakes. Like it, it was the first time they made a game in a 3D platformer, and they figured it out. Like yeah, it's, it's all, <laughs> all right. right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye.